but I think anybody could do this. And you make it fun. <laughs> well, fun I can do. Yeah. And only slight injury. So it's an improvement. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cheers. Cheers. School. Thank you, school. Hello and thank you for joining us for Consumer Confidential Holiday Handbook Edition. I'm Vicki Wynn. It's hard to believe, but the holiday season is upon us. So it, is this really the most wonderful time of the year or is it the most stressful? I mean, honestly, it's probably both. But the good news, we're going to get through this together as I walk you through everything from avoiding travel hassles to serving an unforgettable holiday feast. Most importantly, we're going to help you celebrate the season by maximizing your buying power during these tricky economic times. It's a holiday season like no other as consumers face record inflation, with 70% of shoppers saying they're wary of holiday spending. Nearly 33% of shoppers plan to buy fewer gifts this year, while roughly one quarter said they would opt for cheaper or more practical gifts, such as gas cards. And when it comes to toys... Per item, you're only looking at maybe a 2 to $5 increase, but when you're looking at your overall toy shopping and buying for multiple kids, that can add up really Really quickly. This year, the pressure is really on to snag those deals. Retailers are responding by earlying up holiday sales and discounting excess inventory caused by last year's supply chain issues. A lot of items are kind of unexpected, like so much casual clothing. We're seeing furniture, we're seeing TVs. About a quarter of Americans are already shopping for Thanksgiving and the holiday season, and there's a lot of momentum going into this time. And despite a hectic summer for airline passengers, some 4,000 flights have been delayed. More than half of Americans plan to travel over the holiday season, with 30% flying. Americans are preparing to crowd the nation's roads and airports again for another busy holiday season. But the journey may be rocky as travelers face fewer flight options, high fuel costs, and staffing shortages. Prices for holiday travel expected to be the highest we've seen since before the pandemic. Generally speaking, last minute fares go in one direction and it is always up. But consumers are keeping spirits bright, taking advantage of more flexible work to travel during off-peak days and finding ways to stretch their dollars in the hopes of making this the most wonderful time of the year. We'll get to those travel hacks and holiday deals in just a moment. But first, let's focus on finances. Staying on budget and not going into debt during the holidays is always a challenge. And this year, with inflation, it's probably going to be even easier to overspend. So we have with us money expert Kristen O'Keefe-Merrick. She is with O'Keefe Financial Partners. She's going to join us and give us some great tips to stay on budget. Kristen, great to have you. Good to see you. Yeah. So first question, what is your number one piece of advice before we even head out to the stores to help us rein in our spending? Yeah, I like a macro strategy. Yeah. I love a good checklist. Um, I think, and I've already done this, is, you know, sit down, however you make your list, hand, type, whatever it works for you, mm -hmm. and make a full, who you're buying gifts for. Yeah. Are you entertaining? Uh, are you throwing a little party for the kids? Whatever that looks like. Okay. Then you want to be thoughtful about, can you map this out over the next couple of months, right? We don't have right. to spend all the money in December. All at once, right. Right, it's, it's November, we can think about being thoughtful about buying wrapping paper now, ordering your Christmas card now, thinking about buying a few gifts here and there when you're at the store, mm -hmm. and, and really being thoughtful about when the spend is happening so that your January credit card bill doesn't crush you. No, I like that, spreading yeah. it out. And also, you're right, you've got to make a comprehensive list so you know exactly what you're in for and who can fall off the list. Who can fall off. How do you do that without being feeling guilty about it and also maybe signaling to friends yeah. and family, we're going to do Christmas a little differently this year? Exactly. And I think it's tough to do it with your kids, right? Especially if Santa is, is still actively involved in, in gift giving, then I think you have to be really thoughtful about how you manage your expectations mm -hmm. with your children. But, you know... Uncle Bobby can be told, hey, we're doing Christmas a little different. Here is a jar of jam that I made for you because it's from my heart, as, yeah. opposed, to, as opposed to a sweater that I right. had to spend um, $70 on. And I think that's where managing expectations becomes really important, both right. you know, your spouses, your parents, your siblings, people who are 
are going to understand your financial situation and be okay with not getting a big fancy gift. And be direct. Have that conversation up front early so that everyone's on the yes. same page. That's great advice. Yes. Talk to us about using cash versus credit cards because we see these interest rates. They're going up and up yes. and up. The Fed has signaled they're going to continue to go up. Where do you stand on shopping just with cash? Yeah, I love shopping with cash. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be like you go to the ATM and take out $1,000. You just use your debit card when you're walking around as opposed to using your credit card. The worry that, the worry that you wake up on January 1st in debt from Christmas is a really big bummer. It's a mm -hmm. bummer to start 2023 that way. Right. So if you can be thoughtful about spending, like I said, cash throughout, mm -hmm. um, and if you can avoid credit, do so. For the love of God, do so. It's, right. You know, rates are, APRs on credit cards these days could be up to 25%. That's not a small amount mm -hmm. of interest. And so that adds up, that compounds. Um, the other thing is you can make payments to your credit cards as you go. Okay. So to help keep that interest down so you're not yeah, paying money. Yeah, throw $100 at it yeah. once yeah. a week, and that way when the January bill comes, it's less than you have anticipated. One last quick question. What do consumers need to know about these little micro loans? They're buy now, pay later yes. plans. You see them popping up online. Some are even offered at the point of sale in person. What should we know before we say, yes, I'd like to buy now and pay later? Yeah, I, I think that there's a place for buy now, pay later in our life. Um, I think I would recommend if you use it for a big ticket item that you wouldn't normally be able to afford. For instance, if you have to replace a refrigerator mm -hmm. or a washing machine and you don't have that cash up front, you can utilize buy now, pay later because what happens is it sets you on a payment plan. And, and most of the time, these buy now, pay later do not accumulate interest. Yeah. But they do impact your credit report, yep. which is incredibly important to know. Uh, and they also can catch up with you if you're not thoughtful about how you're paying them right. on time. And also like what happens if you have three loans going at once? What if you have four? Don't buy boots with buy now, pay later. Got it. Right. So no impulse buys, no, no consumer type goods. You save it for the big items. Yes. Big items only. All right. Money expert, Kristen O'Keefe. Good to Mary. see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much. With high inflation, secondhand goods may become a popular option for presents this year, but buyer beware. Criminals are also taking notice, and they're trying to take advantage of those bargain hunters. What you need to know so you're not ripped off. For holiday shoppers in a season of high inflation, online marketplaces can be a great place to find bargains. Unfortunately, police say peer-to-peer -peer sites like Facebook Marketplace and OfferUp are also being used by scammers and violent criminals. Nine times out of 10, if you see a deal that's too good to be true, it is. Chicago police are investigating dozens of robberies over the past few months. The suspects using online listings to lure in would-be buyers. The offenders will contact them via cell phone and tell them to go to another location. And when they go to that area, Four multiple offenders will show up, display guns, and take not only the money that they have in their pockets, but sometimes vehicles, watches, you know, wallets, that type of thing. It's a trend law enforcement officials say has been growing nationwide. In Houston, police releasing this video of a robbery earlier this year. They say the suspects posed on Facebook Marketplace as potential car buyers. In Florida and Detroit, similar cases of suspects accused of robbing individuals selling Air Jordans and iPhones. Authorities say criminals are most likely to target high-end items like designer purses, all-terrain vehicles, scooters, Apple iPads, and watches. To stay safe, officials say always use safe exchange locations, including in some cities, inside the lobby of a police station. And the police are okay with that? That's what we want them to do, especially now the holidays are quickly approaching. We don't want anyone to trade their safety for a great deal. Experts say online marketplaces are also targeted by hackers and scam artists who use fake accounts and listings to steal your money. Common red flags include the seller refusing to meet in person or let you see the item before purchase. The seller's profile shows the same item located in different states. The seller asking for gift cards instead of cash. Facebook says it takes the threat of scams seriously and has specialized detection tools and trained enforcement and review teams working to remove bad actors from the platform. OfferUp says it also has a team of investigators who look to remove bad items and users from its site and provides in-app tools for identity verification.
Facebook also allows users to set up a meeting plan within the app that can be shared with a group of trusted friends, all to ensure your hunt for deals doesn't put you in danger. And Facebook says you should also be aware of buyers who are pushing you to make that sale quickly or if they try to contact you outside of the app. Always try to meet up during the day in a public location. And another way to protect yourself, experts say use a secure credit card or PayPal option whenever you can. Those offer additional fraud protection. And remember, if someone is offering a price that's far lower than market value, that is a big red flag. Coming up, we'll have the 411 on holiday travel from finding deals to dealing with crowds and cancellations. What you need to know about going home for the holidays. Later, scamp, splurge, or swap. How to pull off that unforgettable feast without going broke. You're watching Consumer Confidential on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This year, 113 million travelers are expected to hit the road and the skies for holiday trips. That means busier airports and higher travel costs due to inflation. Here to help us navigate the season ahead is Alicia Prakash. She's the Associate Editorial Director at Travel and Leisure Magazine. Alicia, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you for having me. Everyone wants to know, what are your top tips to make travel this holiday season as stress-free as possible? Yeah, so these days, new travel regulations and short-staffed airports can really lead to long lines when checking bags or going through airport security. Mm -hmm. So I always say it's best to err on the side of caution and arrive at the airport early. Okay. You know, getting to the airport at least two hours in advance is always a good idea, but that's especially true during the holiday season mm -hmm. to avoid any added stress. Uh, similarly, if you're driving to see loved ones, you know, you'll want to a lot extra travel time for traffic. Um, apps like Waze can be incredibly useful tools for gauging traffic conditions, mm -hmm. um, not only before you hit the road, but once you're driving. So definitely recommend downloading that as well. Um, now, if you haven't already booked your flights, mm -hmm. um, I do recommend opting for an early morning flight yeah. as well as a, a direct flight. This will help you avoid any delays with layovers and in the event that your flight does get canceled, there will be hopefully plenty of options for, to you, for you to rebook on throughout the day. A couple of questions. We're all going to be together. So any tips for dealing with crowds specifically? And then what happens if your flight is delayed or it is canceled? Walk me through the process of getting your money back. Sure. So if you are truly looking to escape those crowds this holiday season, it pays to be flexible with your travel date. Okay. So, you know, looking to arrive a day or two earlier um, and returning a day early or late can really help you save money as well as avoid those crowds. Like don't go on the peak days. Exactly. You might also want to opt for a smaller airport that's mm. nearby rather than a main hub. So, you know, for example, fly into Long Beach Airport instead of LAX. Yeah. These smaller airports tend to have less demand, so they offer lower prices and fewer crowds. But mm -hmm. either way, if you're flying, download the MyTSA app, okay. which offers information on airport security wait times. 
Um, so, you know, you can monitor for the hubs that you'll be flying and then uh, plan accordingly. And what do people need to know when their flight is delayed or canceled? Yeah, great question. So, you know, hopefully all runs smoothly. Um, however, first and foremost, you'll want to consider uh, third party sites like mm -hmm. Flight Aware to monitor your flight for any potential delays or cancellations. Um, you know, in the event that your flight is unfortunately canceled, uh, your airline will likely rebook you on a new flight. Um, if for some reason that route doesn't work for your travel schedule, though, call your airline. You know, talking to a customer service agent really provides you with flexibility to get the rebooking that you want. And one tip I really love is call your airline's international hotline. Yes, you know, most I heard about US, this. Yeah, so most U.S. passengers will call the main the U.S. domestic line, yeah. Yep. And while that's a great option, you'll likely endure longer waits. Mm -hmm. So try calling your foreign office and, you know, the agents there, you'll likely get through faster and the agents there will be able to help you just the same. Right. They speak English. Yep. What's, <laughs> let's talk about gear. What are the best pieces of luggage or bags? What do you like to travel with? Yeah, so, well, first and foremost, I'll say I am team carry-on. So yeah. if you can, pack a carry-on only light. to reduce your chances of losing any luggage along the way. Um, you know, it's also a great idea so that you can bypass the baggage carousel on your way out so you can breeze yeah. right through the airport when you land. Um, but if you are checking a bag, take a picture of your suitcase. Mm. Um, this can really help you get compensated in the event that your bag does get lost or, you know, it does arrive at your destination but arrives damaged. I have uh, about 30 seconds. What's your best tip for booking hotels? Yeah, so I would say um, if you haven't yet booked your hotels, compare prices on sites like Booking.com and Expedia to find a price that's right for you and your budget. Um, interestingly, the platform you use can also make a difference. So, um, you know, if you're on mobile, whether you're in app or browser, hmm. the prices might appear lower there than they would when you're on desktop. Interesting. And, yeah, and that's because some aggregator sites will offer app-only promotions mm -hmm. in order to um, entice their users to download and use their app. So ah. definitely consider that as All well. Right. Alicia Prakash with Travel and Leisure. Thank you so much, Alicia. Yep, thank you for having me. And when we come back, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, those are bargain hunting days, but are you really getting a deal? And skimp, splurge, or swap, where to go big at the grocery aisle for your holiday feast? Consumer Confidential is coming right back. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. If you have started your holiday shopping, chances are you have already seen signs for deep discounts. But should you snap up those deals right away? 
Kevin Bressler is the executive editor at Consumers Checkbook. It's a nonprofit with the mission to help consumers get the best service and lowest prices. Kevin, that's music to our ears, especially right now. Yeah. Welcome. Oh. So let's talk about this study that y'all did. It's not even Thanksgiving, but we have been seeing since October that many stores have been comparing yeah. their deals to Black Friday sales, saying shop early, shop often, you're going to get great discounts. Right. What did you actually find when you compared prices across a yeah. whole bunch of stores. Actually, when I woke up this morning, there were two junk emails waiting for me <laughs> saying Black Friday starts now mm -hmm. uh, at a few major retailers. Uh, I really urge folks to not worry so much about the timing of these things. Don't think, oh, I'd better jump on this quote unquote deal now or it's going to go away. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been tracking prices at major retailers for years. Uh, we recently completed a study where we looked at uh, 25 major retailers over 33 weeks. We checked in on their prices once wow. a week and found that almost all of them these days are guilty of holding what we call misleading sales, mm. where you know the sales, these supposed discounts never end, uh, right. that week after week when we checked in, these prices, these products were, were listed as being on sale. Uh, but what they're doing is essentially they're crossing out a price, a list or regular price, that they rarely, if ever, charge wow. so that they can tell you that they're selling it for 20% off, 40% off, 60% off. So it's like a perma sale. It's, it's just it, always happening. Yes, and you think, mm, OK, I'm getting a better deal. But in some cases, it's never was at that regular price. Right. And, and in many cases, these stores never charge that list price or wow. at least you know, only charged it for 10 minutes or for a few hours or something. Uh, I think that you know, these are misleading sales. We yeah. call them fake sales. Sure. It's an attempt to get you to not shop around, to right. make you think, oh, you gotta oh, do it's, it now, act yeah. now, buy now. And by you know, if it's six, if it says it's sixty percent off, what's your your inclination is to say, well, they're practically giving it away. Right. Why would I bother shopping? There around? is a real psychology to it. So, okay, you found this. You looked at twenty five stores, thirty three weeks. What is the best way then? to know if a sale really is a sale and if this yeah. really is the good time to buy that item. Right. The, don't be pressured. Okay. Don't think, okay, if I don't do this right now, this deal's going to go away because that's rarely the case. We rarely found that, you know, prices dip below a certain threshold for very long and that you really, if you, had, if you hadn't jumped on something, you would have lost out. Okay. Uh, you know, stores, some of them even on their websites have countdown clocks now. That's right. to get you to, to, to ramp up the anxiety to make sure that, you know, that you buy then and there without shopping around. So the key is to shop around. Okay, Just, so compare you know, prices, simply shop make, around. Make sure you can't get a better price somewhere else. Do a, do a quick internet search mm -hmm. uh, to see if, if other major retailers are offering it for less. Sometimes I'll just search it right there in the store. There you go. And if you're in the store, you can even use apps that let you scan barcodes and they'll do oh. comparison shopping for you. Uh, there are price shopping bots out there. There's uh, a few that, that we've tried that seem to work okay. Our mm -hmm. price grabber has one. Yahoo Shopping has one. Uh, there are, you know, extensions you can add to your web browser that will like called honey mm -hmm. it will look around to see if there are coupon codes that can apply or maybe better deals other places i'll tell you none of these things are perfect right, right? none of them work great uh, but overall, the key is to just make sure you do some shopping around before you buy, especially if it's a big ticket item. Kevin, what are you finding in terms of stores and their willingness to do two important things? One, price match. Are stores generally willing to price match if you find a better price and can show it to them? And two, are they willing to do price adjustments more now than they have in the past? Yeah, both those things, yes. Okay, uh, especially if you're in a store and you find that a, a competitor is, is charging less money for that item, mm -hmm. uh, most stores will price match. And it sounds like a pain, but we found, our researchers have found that when they've tried to do it, it's quite easy. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody at the, the register can do it. Sometimes you have to go to customer service. But we found it was a pretty simple, straightforward process. Another thing you can do is, and this is even also kind of a pain, is that after you've bought something, if prices go down, mm -hmm. and so you could have bought it for less at that retailer, you can usually go back and they'll go ahead and make an adjustment to your, your bill. You'll and get being a, a nice refund goes a them. long way. Just it does, nice. yeah. Okay. And, you know, in a lot of these stores, they're set up, they're used to it, surprisingly. I mean, yeah. I just didn't think many people did this, but it was oh, quite easy when we, we tried to, to get these adjustments made. Kevin Brassler with Consumers Checkbook. Thank, Thank you so you. much for your time, Kevin. Good to see you. Well, next up, take the pressure off of your holiday meal. Enjoy the feast without the fuss. We're going to show you how to save time and money when Consumer Confidential comes right back. From New Orleans, nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it.
breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Well, it sure can feel like you have a lot on your plate when it comes to planning that holiday meal, especially this year with food prices going up. Have no fear. You can have that feast without the fuss. With me now to help walk us through it all is Real Simple Editor-in-Chief Lauren Iannotti. Lauren, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us on Consumer Confidential. So let's talk a little bit about the big holiday coming up. Yeah. where turkey is the star, and turkey prices, we know, are up 73% from last year. It's expensive. So what are your best tips uh, in terms of how you can save on the staples and still have a wonderful meal? Where can we skimp? Where should we splurge? Where should we swap? Sure, okay. Don't buy the breast. Don't buy the whole bird. Buy the legs. So oh. we actually, our main event this year, I know, it's a little bit crazy, and I remember talking to my food director, and she's like, this is the nuts. legs. Legs. They're much cheaper because they're less in demand. Mm -hmm. They're totally delicious. It's yeah, dark they are. meat. Dark meat. It's, yeah, and absolutely. And we have a great recipe for them, and they can be just as delicious as anything else. So I just say that's where you're going to save right there. If you go for the legs instead. Also, they're also like a pound each or a pound and a half, okay. which basically takes the, some of the hard math, math out of right. figuring you're it like out. How many people one each per, of you yep, gets a leg? One leg per person. Oh, absolutely. I love that. Okay. Stuffing. Um, don't worry about using dried spices. You absolutely can use dried spices. You can use the spices that are in your cupboard right now. Just anything. I know a lot of recipes call for, for fresh, fresh, right? Spice. And you feel like, oh, I got to do I that. Know. Nope. Um, you can no, use dried. Okay. One tablespoon of fresh equals one teaspoon of dried. Got it. Okay. Um, I, I was very yeah. careful not to mix that up. I don't <laughs> right. want people poisoning their relatives. Um, <laughs> Too so, much rosemary. <laughs> exactly. So, and um, if you want to get fresh, absolutely. Don't worry about wasting because there are ways to preserve them and save them. You basically cut them like fresh cut flowers, mm -hmm. the leftovers, and put them in a um, glass on the counter, and they can stay for a couple of days. Just change the water every day. And then, you know, if you're worried about still not using them, just chop them up and put them in an ice cube tray with olive oil. I love this trip. trick. Put it in the freezer. And then you've got these little flavor bombs you can put in Ooh. soups and stews and sauces. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yep. that's a great tip. What about beverages? Those tend to add up. They get pricey. Yep. What are your tips on saving there? So um, don't feel like you have to have a varietal of wine for every single person. Like Uncle Doug really likes that Cote de Rhone. Well, then he can bring it. <laughs> oh, your nice. job is to get one red and one white. Crowd pleasers. They don't have to be expensive. If you talk to your, the, the, your wine shop, they'll mm -hmm. have good bottles for like... 12 bucks a bottle, and the nice. more you buy, the cheaper it is. So if you get a case, if you have a big crowd coming, right. one red, a okay. medium-bodied red that goes mm -hmm. nicely with your turkey, yeah. one white, let's say a Sancerre, a nice acidic Sancerre, a Sauvignon Blanc that goes nicely with your turkey, mm. and they get to choose, and you're done. I like that. You know, people did that for weddings, too, because if you have an open exactly. bar, it can be really crazy, but if you just choose a few select drinks, nobody really even feels like they're missing out. Totally. Let's exactly. talk about the grocery store. Where can we cut costs? What should we be keeping an eye out when it comes to bargains? So the big thing about saving at the grocery store, and we know it's 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 tough out there. I mean, the prices are skyrocketing. Um, so plan early. Plan. I like to say shop early, shop often. Yeah. First, set your menu. List up what you're not, what you're going to have to buy. Perishables versus non-perishables. Non-perishables okay. you're going to hold off on. Right now, we're talking about. We've got a couple weeks till Thanksgiving. We're talking about looking out for sales. Mm -hmm. If you have time, you can comparison shop. You right? can. So you look for things on sale. Sign up for your store's um, grocery uh, uh, points uh, card or point. Yeah, the loyalty the program. Loyal, yeah. yeah. And the rewards. Get get. The, you know, if you, I don't know what you've been waiting for, but if you haven't done it yet, yeah, do, it, do now. it now. You'll get deals. Um, they'll let you know about deals that others don't get. And then there are also apps that you can sign up mm -hmm. for, or you can, sorry, load up on your phone, and it's 
basket, and the other one that we were like is flip with flip, two peas. Yeah. Yep. Flip with two peas. And you, and you can, and they will do the comparison shopping for you. They're like you're, you're going through your circulars for you, basically, and telling you where the best deals are and how to get to them. I got 20 seconds. What about cooking? Best tip there. Oh my God. Um, I guess make ahead. I mean, yeah. so like I map it out and I write it down. Here, actually, my best tip is write it down because it that down. way you don't have to keep deciding over and over again. You know what you're making on Wednesday. You know mm -hmm. what you're making on Thursday. You have to spread it all out. You have to make sure you're preparing and making things ahead, and you will have the best Thanksgiving ever. I love it. Great tips. Lauren Iannotti with Real Simple. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. That is going to be our time for now. Catch me on NBC News Now weekdays from 12 to 2 Eastern. For all of us here at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. Wednesday to all of you. I'm happy to be back for another Pop Start Plus. On the show today, we're going to dive into a few Christmas classics. First, a fan favorite, a Charlie Brown Christmas, and then The Grinch. Finally, we're going to hear from Hugh Grant back in the 90s talking about love actually. But first, here's today's Pop Start. Thanks, As Dylan. Mr. Roker would yeah. say, best time of yes, the morning. Indeed. Do I smell like a Douglas fir coming back? <laughs> okay, good. Here we go, guys. First up, that 90s show. The first teasers out for Netflix's reboot of that 70s show. The new series returns to Point Pleasant, Wisconsin. It brings back Kitty and her curmudgeon <laughs> husband, Red Foreman, as they navigate teenagers of a new era with their granddaughter and her band of rowdy friends. Okay, kids, the basement is all yours. Lights on. Shirts on and no dancing. No dancing. You're like the guy from Footloose. <laughs> no dancing, you guys. They go in my room. My foot goes in there. Get out. See you soon. Get out. Don't be a stranger. Get out. Extra icing. That was mine. We never locked the sliding door. We do now. <laughs> Someone tells me uh, Mr. Melvin was a big fan of that. Uh, huge fan. Really? Are you going to watch that 90s Absolutely show? Absolutely. Okay. It's funny. Right. Yes. Good to know. All right, guys. How about this one? That 90s show, it's going to start streaming in January. Next up, the Super Mario Brothers movie, eagerly awaited in the Sobroff household. Uh, get ready to feel all of the Nintendo nostalgia. The latest trailer reveals a fresh look at the recognizable cast of characters set to make an appearance in the film. Plus, we get a peek at how the iconic video game uh, and others like Mario Kart will be featured in the story. Watch this. There's a huge universe out there. With a lot of galaxies. They're all counting on us. No pressure. Great. The Rainbow Road, Princess oh. Peach. <laughs> uh, I had them all. A Super NES, NES, oh, original the console. The mushrooms go, oh, oh. they're so cute. <laughs> they're so cute, I know. I love it. All right, uh, Super Mario Brothers movie hits theaters in April. How about this one? Adam Sandler, the comedian's written some of the funniest movies of all time, from Happy Gilmore to Big Daddy, and apparently that hilarious sense of humor runs in his family on Monday night. The Sandman was honored with a career tribute at the Gotham Awards, and this is so great. He let his two teenage daughters <laughs> write like his acceptance speech, which turned into one hilarious roast of dear old dad. That's cute. Just know while daddy is with you tonight, we're doing everything we're not allowed to do when daddy's home. Dare we say laugh out loud at Ben Stiller movies. <laughs> <laughs> the last time daddy caught us chuckling away at the Meet the Parents trilogy, he immediately stormed into the room he calls the Screaming Room, which we just call the Shower, <laughs> and bellowed out the phrase, only the Sandman makes people laugh. <laughs> Every funny. other comedian. That's funny. Uh, They're good. Yeah, it's, funny. It's, awesome. it's unclear, <laughs> actually, if, if they really wrote it. But if, if they did, uh, Sonny and Sadie Sandler, Red Future in They're comedy. Yeah. Yeah. No Sounds good. Okay, next up, Batman. Anybody treat a dream of cruising around with Michael Keaton in, wow. uh, in this hot rod? Look at this thing. I did. 
<laughs> uh, that Batmobile, that very one, can be all yours. The 1989 Warner Brothers Ooh. Bat Car Batmobile. Come on. Currently up for sale wow, from that. the classic Auto Mall. The glossy black machine was featured as a prop in both the Tim Burton's Cape Crusader movies, Batman, also Batman Returns. Top speed comes in at a mere, this is, I'm not kidding, 25 to 30 miles an hour. <laughs> really? So it's like a golf cart that looks like a Batmobile. That's kind of cool. Uh, I mean, where are you going to drive that? I, nowhere. Oh, nowhere. No, Maybe to the golf. It has a working flamethrower. In case you're wondering uh, where it's been sitting for all this time, it, the car was previous home was stationed outside the Batman roller coaster, Six Flags in New Jersey. It's being offered at the low, low price of one and a half million dollars. <laughs> Something to consider when you're Christmas tree oh, shopping. Also. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> exactly. And finally, this one we've all been waiting for. Spotify, the music streamer, just dropped this annual wrapped roundup, sending users all the data about their most streamed music of the year. We got a peek at some of ours in advance. The results were a bit surprising. Craig, uh, Craig had a hip hop throwback as your number one song of the year. Any oh, comments? I love oh, right. Wait, remember? This I year? love that song. So you know what happened? What? This is the year I decided to introduce my eight-year-old to hip hop, uh, and I used the clean version of this way, song. Nice. He, he listened to it all. It's the so good, so good. It's cute. Over yeah. and over and over. Yeah. Over and yeah. over again. Yeah. Mine was dictated by my kids too. Check it out. Encanto. Oh, of course. For the win this year. We don't talk about, Br oh no, surface pressure was our number one. Uh, yeah. We don't talk about Bruno was number two. Across the globe, check it out. Here's what everybody else is listening to uh, on Spotify. Top three artists of the year go to Bad Bunny, yep, yep. Taylor Swift, of course. Drake, of yep. course. Mm -hmm. uh, most streamed songs as it was by our buddy Harry Styles. Of course. Mm -hmm. Heat Waves by Glass Animals and Stay from Justin ah. Bieber uh, and The Kid Roy. And that's the latest for you today. Coming up on this Wednesday, Wednesday Adams. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels like. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're back here on Pop Start Plus. The long-awaited The Addams Family spinoff is finally here. Jenna Ortega has taken on the role of the title character Wednesday this time around. And she stopped by 1A to tell us all about it. The Addams Family is back in a new Netflix spinoff series called Wednesday. Yeah, and Wednesday is played by Jenna Ortega. She's a teenager now attending a boarding school for supernaturally gifted outcasts when her parents come to visit. Check it out. <sighs> Let's get this over with. There she is. Oh, how we miss those accusing eyes and youthful sleep. How are you, my little rain cloud? I thought Thing was filling you in on my every move. I uncovered your feeble subterfuge almost immediately. So how's the little fella doing? Does he still have all his fingers? Relax. I haven't snapped any of his digits yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that deadpan. Oh my God, that's so you. You're so good at that. Oh, I thought you were saying I'm so deadpan. No, I get that no. a lot too. Yeah. You do? Yeah. yeah, I get that all the time. So wait, how do you keep that deadpan face while you're going through all this? Yeah, it was something that Tim and I established very early on. She doesn't blink. He likes it when I tilt my chin down and look through my eyebrows, kind of a Kubrick stare, and then I relax all of the muscles on my face. So I go. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my so, you know, and then you just move your eyebrows, <gasps> and that's pretty but much how all you your reaction. I'm confused Blinking. how you don't blink. Um, I, I think I got kind of annoying about it on set, to be honest, because I would have to restart a take if I started, because sometimes you start crying. Yeah, totally. was Romanian winter. There was all this wind in my face. I learned to blink on other people's lines. So um, you were in Romania. You shot this there. Yeah. What was that like? It was insane. I had never been to that side of the world before, and uh, you know, the crew, some of the most delightful people I've ever met in yeah. my entire life, and it was perfect because uh, we did a lot of exterior stuff, so we shot at castles and things like that, yeah. so it fit the, the gothic atmosphere. Wow. Okay, we talked about this a little bit in commercial break, but Catherine Zeta-Jones, oh, who yeah. we adore, plays your mother. She's incredible. She's. I feel like her humor is so underrated. People don't understand. We were on set, and there were some of my favorite scenes that we shot just because she was so open to improvise and have fun and try new things and, and yeah she just has great instincts obviously. um you have a lot of interesting projects there's the project you then there's scream and then there's like a dark uh, you, you seem to be attracted to these roles Scary. what is it about those roles that sort of pulls you in no, i feel like there's some invisible invisible string that just kind of connects us Holy because it, they just happen I, it wasn't something that i set out to do i wasn't trying to only do horror projects and i'm very excited about it about it because i i love the genre yeah. immensely you do yeah and there's so much fun to be on because everyone who's working on a horror set is so passionate about what they're doing you know it's a uh, yeah i <laughs> My greatest memories, horror yeah, sets. Really. Up next, the actor who voiced Violet in A Charlie Brown Christmas takes a look back at the iconic film. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. Because, Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Danny. You are out. I was trying to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. The big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? <laughs> kind of training, right? How you doing, Lester? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're back. The Christmas countdown is officially on, and you can't celebrate without that holiday staple, a Charlie Brown Christmas. For our flashback series, Sally Dreyer, who voiced Violet, reflected on what it was like to be part of the film at just eight years old. I didn't send you a Christmas card, Charlie Brown. I didn't send you a Christmas card, Charlie Brown. Apparently, that's the shoe that dropped, so that was my big line in that one. Charlie Brown! Oh, no, we're doomed. I was selected for the role in Charlie Brown Christmas as Violet, and I think there may have been a little nepotism there, but uh, my sister worked for Lee Mendelson, the producer at the time. Um, I was eight years old. Um, he had been pitching to Charles Schultz for years. I want to do a special. I want, they were friends. I want to do a special. I to do a special. No, 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 no. Well, Charles Schultz called him one day and said, I have an idea, but it has to be this way. And that was a Charlie Brown Christmas, which was very controversial at the time because it included talk of Jesus and the manger and stuff like that. So in 1964, I guess that was going out on a limb. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, 
But he said, I have requirement that I only want to use real kids for the voices. So my sister was sent with a reel to reel tape recording thing to all the grammar schools in the area. And at the end of a couple of long days, uh, she sat me down at the kitchen table before dinner and said, I might as well try you. So that's how I was selected for Violet. Boy, are you stupid, Charlie Brown. So when we went to record at the time, because I was eight, it meant a day away from school. So I got to get out of school and my sister uh, generally, or another uh, production assistant who worked for Lee Mendelssohn would pilot all the voices in a car and drive us to San Francisco, um, where we would uh, go into, on Van Ness Drive, we would go up in, uh, into the recording studio and they would take us in one at a time to, to do our lines. Some of us couldn't even read because some of us were five. So they would have to say the line and then we would repeat it and try and mimic the inflection. I'm still kind of a good mimic. Unfortunately, I can't take it on the road, but when I hear something, I can uh, repeat it that way, which I never realized until hours and hours at the recording studio, sometimes it went a little slower. <laughs> And then if there was a group shot, if there was a group yell, so to speak, they would have us stand up and, and all scream whatever. You blockhead Charlie Brown or whatever it was all together. Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown! It was more Lee Mendelssohn and Bill Melendez who were working on the specials. So they would prompt us as to how to deliver a line or what it meant. And so sometimes we'd go into the recording studio one at a time and we would repeat a line maybe once. Sometimes it took six tries, sometimes it took one try, but the magic was always in the editing. I, I was amazed that they were able to link all that information together and make it actually work. I never thought it was such a bad little tree. But when Charlie Brown Christmas debuted, we all sat in front of the little tiny black and white TV and watched it. But I remember as a kid not really being able to relate to what was my voice or what, you know, how it, it just seemed like this magical thing that appeared on the screen that was nothing at all like the experience itself. I told you he'd goof it up. He's not the kind you can depend on to do anything right. You know, I don't relate to Violet as much. She's a shadowy character in my past. I think uh, I was made to do Lucy. <laughs> Charles Schultz decided I had a particular quality of crabbiness in my voice, so, and I was elevated <laughs> to the role of Lucy. In the Charlie Brown Christmas, I was seven, and then The Great Pumpkin, eight, and then memory doesn't serve me that great, but I think in Charlie Brown, or You're in Love, Charlie Brown, I was nine or 10. The first two or three shows came out pretty quickly, and then there was a little bit longer lag after that. So it was a Charlie Brown Christmas, The Great Pumpkin, and then You're in Love, Charlie Brown. And then pretty much I got the ax. <laughs> that was a dilemma that they had is because we all got fired when we hit 12 and our voices changed. So they had to seek out a whole new cast. And it was important for them to find kids that sounded the same. So they really dug themselves a hole because that was a difficult thing. But, but I, I think true to now, even that last animated special um, that was, I don't know how many years, it's been five years or so, those kids sound like we did. And it's kind of amazing. My partner and I have a store in Jerome, Arizona, and word is out, I guess, that it's our store. And I see people wander through with peanut shirts a lot, and they just are coming to see. Or they write a letter, and I get, I get mail from people who want autographs, which is touching, but it still baffles me. Um, and because um, I was just a little kid. But, but the shows mean so much to people and their family and, and, and times they've shared together with their families. So they reach out because they feel like I'm sort of part of that. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown, I can tell you what Christmas is all about. I think the reason people love Charlie Brown and Christmas so much is because it's so pure and takes us back to the meaning of Christmas. And 
uh, gives me chills actually. And Linus, his delivery of his soliloquy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And I think that's regardless of your background as Americans, it just sort of hit home somehow. Nothing like peanuts to get you through the holidays. Coming up next, Christine Baranski on what it was like to film The Grinch. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. So Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Danny. You are out. I was you trying to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. We're continuing our holiday journey into our Today Vault. Christine Baranski starred in the live action adaptation of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Here she is speaking about that role back in 2000. In the new movie, Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, we're given some clues as to why the green guy is so, well, Grinchy. It turns out he had an unrequited childhood crush on Martha May Huvier. Christine Baranski plays the object of the Grinch's desire. Hi, Christine. Nice Hello. to see you. A dubious distinction. Oh, the Grinch's but, girlfriend. But what a great role you it's had. It's a wonderful role. And what, a, what an incredibly fun movie. Was it as fun to make as it was to watch? It was, first of all, a privilege to bring to life a classic to be part of a, a huge Hollywood effort that was going to bring to life something that people hold in such, you know, esteem and is, is so beloved. So there was that, there was this feeling of awe that we're all part of this. Then there was the fun of showing up on what was in effect the largest set ever built at Universal and being part of a production that took up 11 sound stages. I was flown out for like eight or ten makeup tests before sitting down to start filming. We were all in the makeup chair for two, three hours. We would, the, the production values were so extraordinary. So you had the feeling you were a part of something just very, very big, very special. And yeah, it was fun. Meanwhile, Jim Carrey, of course, is, is kind of a force. Is nature, this not the role he? for him, the role of his, whether he likes it or not, he's going to be, you know, the Grinch. That will be his defining role, I think. He's astonishing. And you, you, you were saying, Christine, that he's not only enormously talented and fun with his mind going a thousand miles an hour, but he's also quite accessible. That you all would talk in the, during the, obviously, <laughs> yeah, the talk, you know, the great but I mean, thing, he was open to ideas. He. Yeah, I think that what's impressive to another actor is seeing no matter how much money that other actor is being paid, how big a star, when that person walks on the set, focuses on the work, does take after take, hitting the marks, bringing the energy up for every take, just giving a fully committed performance, then walking off after the take, going to the monitor, talking to fellow actors about how can we make the shot better then you know he lights up his american spirit cigarette with his green <laughs> green paws and kind of you can sit there and joke with him and you know he's accessible goes back does another take and you know his energy is so galvanic he had to just come up to that huge level of energy with every take in addition to which he was 
here, Jim, I should get paid for a pub. <laughs> I know, are you his agent? Yeah. No, but I mean, the man was covered in green yak hair, oversized <laughs> contact lenses that were oh, I killing know. him. D a double set of double teeth. Double set of teeth. He couldn't breathe through his nose. <laughs> so none of us could complain that we were a little uncomfortable, and sometimes we were quite uncomfortable. Because I want to ask Because he you, was like, oh my God. Your makeup as well. I mean, actually, let's go to the scene, because then oh, people yeah, could see how you looked in the movie. Great, and great. unlike the Grinch, Martha May Houvier loves Christmas. She's sort of a combination of Martha Stewart and Jacqueline Bouvier. Yes. <laughs> and her decorations are, of course, because of the Martha Stewart in her, yes. the best in Whoville. Yes. Meanwhile, I wish they, we, we'd been able to see you a little closer up, because you're sort of Christine, but you have kind of a canine lower Well, we all face. were pretty canine, but actually I had to be a glamorous who, which was really a challenge to Rick Baker, <laughs> the makeup artist. They kept doing my makeup over and over because, you know, you have that little nose and yeah, that what, oversized lip. Yeah, what was the actually, weird thing? Actually, the prosthetic goes on here yeah. and it covers this part of your face, but then it actually glues onto your upper lip. Oh, I see. So, so you can still have a normal mouth? But this part of you has to remain very still because if you laugh or chew, the prosthetic would crease. So I spent whole days when I knew I had a close-up, just kind of in my trailer going, not laughing. I said, don't make me laugh. Don't make me laugh. Well, how could you breathe? Because that I could nose, breathe through my little, the little holes. You had little holes there? But that scene that you just saw was one of the last scenes filmed, and it was shot at about 3 in the morning. And I came to work at about 6, got into the makeup, and then was in my trailer kind of sleeping on and off till about 2 in the morning. And then they called me on the set. And then I had to be, ah, you know, perfect. Anyway, well, you came across very well, and you, you. look it's quite fetching in your little Santa, sexy a, Santa that's outfit. That's a hell of an outfit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great, great movie, Thank and you're you. terrific in it. And of course, you're the reason that The Grinch is so grouchy, and people just have to, to go see the movie to understand the backstory I and know. the traumatic experience he I had know. as a child. Oh, I know. It's wonderful. Anyway, great to see you, Christine. Great to see Thanks you. so much Thank for coming you, in. Can't have Christmas time without the Grinch. Check out another favorite from the vault, our conversation with Hugh Grant discussing his classic holiday film, Love Actually. No one's gonna fancy a girl with thighs the size of big tree trunks. Not a nice guy, actually, in the end. Mm. You know, um, being Prime Minister, I could just have him murdered. Thank you, sir. I'll think about it. Do. Hugh yeah. Grant, good morning. Nice to see you, Hugh. Or should you. I call you Mr. Prime Minister? If you would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you found out you were playing the Prime Minister, that must have been sort of a, what? Well, I, know, I, I like the idea, uh, particularly in a Richard Curtis film, because he's always given me such loser parts before, you know? <laughs> yeah. Loser bookseller. Um, four weddings, I didn't even have a job. Um, so, and I quite like the idea of being grown up and having a little authority in this one. And, yeah. and so did you use Tony Blair as your role model? I mean, he's kind of a young, dashing <laughs> prime minister himself. And Yes, but no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to keep your job, for one, right? Well, there's that. And uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's totally... Totally invented from scratch, really. Uh, I tried to do some research, but it was too boring. I, re I tried to read a book on politics. But you did? Yeah, I got to page three and threw it away. Have you ever entertained the notion of being in politics yourself? Uh, no, I'm too profoundly selfish. I think you have to have a, a sense of public duty. I'm sure that's why Arnie's gone into it, because he cares. And I, I just don't care. I mean, I think if I was in power, I would, I would abuse my position. Yeah. Caligula would be my model. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about about your character. You say that when you were falling in love with your secretary, who's so cute and sweet, and everybody, by the way, the audience, of course, falls in love with her because her boyfriend calls her fat. I mean, right. how's that for getting sympathy, right? Very clever, very clever. <laughs> very, very clever. Yeah. But you wanted to make sure there was no dithering and no bumbling. That's right. Well, I, th Are you afraid that you've been called a ditherer and a bumbler too, well, too many times, Hugh? Yes, do you know, I think th those are trigger words to make my teeth grind. It's kind of like perky with me. Really? Oh. You are pretty perky then. I am Particularly not. this morning. No, I'm not. No, you're not. You're not at all perky. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm very unperky at times, but I just don't want to yeah, see that side. I want to see that side of you. I've heard about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, bumbling, uh, yeah, I felt there was a touch of a little bit too niceness in this character as it was originally written. And I had very much enjoyed in, you know, Bridget Jones and About a Boy and those films being a little edgier 
Uh, and uh, so I, I made Richard slightly rewrite it to just make him not too lovable, not too the perfect head boy. Do you have head boys in American no, schools? No, what is a head boy? Sort of top boy, the guy, the guy oh, who's... Oh, the shining star. Yeah, the shining star, star the who looks after everyone else, yeah. Which, of course, is Richard Curtis. <laughs> All right, well, tell me a little bit about this movie. In an, it's a series of vignettes about love. Yeah. And, and at first, I mean, you're a little bit uh, on the cynical side. Yes. At first, were you a little... Well, uh, no, would I mean... Would you like it, me to do that again? Yes, I would. <laughs> I like that. Um, I, yeah, listen, it's, uh, I admire the film very much. It's not my personal philosophy of life, you know. The, the whole film begins with my character in a voiceover saying, you know, people think that the world is full of hatred and greed, but that's not true. Wherever I look, I see love is all around. Well, th that's what my character says. I, Hugh Grant, think that the world is, in fact, full of hatred and greed, yeah. So fun hearing from Hugh, and who doesn't love love, actually? All right, people, thanks for being here today for Pop Star Plus. Have a great day. The candles are ready, the tree is trimmed, the presents are wrapped, the table is set. And this year, I'm the one cooking the big holiday meal? Well, I found a little bit of confidence in the kitchen with pork, pancakes, hummus, even watermelon. So now I have a chance to show my family what tasty tricks I've got up these green sleeves. Lucky for me, chef and restaurateur Marcus Samuelson is going to make sure this is a holiday to remember. We'll be making a spiral ham with a pineapple Aleppo glaze, a decadent potato gratin with apple and thyme, and then we're going to finish it off making crispy Brussels sprouts with pomegranates, walnuts, and maple syrup. I am ready to shine like the star on top of the Rockefeller Center tree with Marcus's help. So let's get started. Chef Marcus Samuelson, so we're doing it. We have our festive yes, shirts on. Absolutely. And we have a ham. I just love ham. a holiday ham. Can you smell like the ham is over there? But what smells even better? What is this? It's some Swedish glug. Glug like glug. Glug glug, 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 glug like okay. that. Cheers, cool. Is there is there also some extra in this? Yes, oh, of course. Yes, wait, that is delicious. It's good, right? You grew up in Sweden and Ethiopia, so all yeah. of your flavors are kind of infused with they're this. All in they're confused and infused here. <laughs> I yes. love it. Alright, this is good. This is gonna be trouble. Let's mm -hmm. while I'm still sober, yeah. what's the plan here? Our plan for today is prepare the ham, slice the apple and potatoes, build the gratin, make the pineapple apple glaze, glaze the ham. Saute and season the Brussels sprouts. Plate and serve. So, spiral ham. Yeah. So I've cooked it my entire life. Yeah. Done nothing else but cooking. I didn't know what spiral ham was. Okay, thank you. Were you. The one, I don't know what You is, were the one introduced it to me. What is spiral ham? So this beautiful ham that's already pre-cooked okay. and baked, but it's also sliced for you, which makes it much easier. Oh my gosh, that's like right? having a battle. I know. And the key is to wrap up the ham. So I'm going to give this to you. Okay. Let's wrap it. Like wrap it all the way around? You can do that. Like even on the underside? Uh, not underneath, Okay, no. okay, like this. So just, yeah. okay. I'll give you, I'm going to give you two. Should I give it a tuck like a burrito tuck? Yeah, like beautiful. This, this is how I tuck my kids in with a blanket. Yeah. Okay. Pop that in the oven. All right. Woo, it's a heavy one. What temperature did you say? 350. Okay. Oh, and I see you've got it down here on the low, nice. lowest rack. Mm -hmm. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I wave. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The big variable is storm surge.
why was it important for you to be here? What kind of training regimen? How you doing, Lester? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Ham's in the oven. Now we're going to make our potatoes. And since you are now such a good cook, you've got uh, all these star chefs coming in here, <laughs> I'm going to introduce some new tools to you. Oh my, I, what is this? It's a mandolin. Oh, good. Did you have EMS and first aid on standby? <laughs> we're ready. we got everybody Okay, I'm calling. wearing red, so if good. I bleed, it'll just match and yes. blend. Okay, this does scare me. Yeah, so... We, the key with the mandolin is, hold it here, okay. right? Yeah. And then you just shave down like that. Look at that, we got our sweet potato. This potato grass hand, great. <laughs> Mine's <Potato>. broken. <laughs> yeah, blame, that's what I do, blame the tools. But wait, I'm not, why is it nothing's happening? Okay. Do I me doing it right? Are you doing it right. Well, You're why doing... is nothing happening? It is, it's just gonna. Oh, it is! I love that you oh, have my... like, Great patient. Files. They're so nice and thin. Yeah. Oh my God, I think, but... I, yeah, I just cut myself. No, Yeah. I'm on. Telling, I'm no. We need a Band-Aid. Yeah. I mean, honestly, every time, Marcus, every time. But the key is don't, like, do not try to be a hero. That's the key with this. Okay. And if you need to, like, put a big piece aside and you chop it up okay. and put it in the gratin, do that. Does but the recipe gratin. call for blood? Yeah, exactly. The blood gratin is delicious okay. during the holiday. Put that in there. Can that go away now? Yes. That yes. Okay. Okay. Peeling, peel. as, that's one thing I know how to do. Peel yeah. a potato. So growing up, like, what was the food at your table? Well, like, you know, it's funny you just mentioned that because one of the things my mom would do is say, Savannah, will you sit here and peel all those potatoes? <laughs> it was like sort of that grunt work, you know? Yeah. What was your favorite recipe during the holidays? Was it something like, oh, I remember when we eat oh, this. Oh, yeah. Well, I actually always loved a ham, and then my mom used to make this, um, we called it broccoli casserole. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'm telling you, cheese whiz, broccoli, and yeah. white rice. It was I the 70s that. market. I love that. I yeah. love that. You have fancy word for broccoli. I love that. Yeah, yeah. What it, about you? You had such a more interesting international growing up. Yeah. Uh, if you call Swedish meatballs that interesting, but that's... Well, sort of, I love a meatball. Let <laughs> yeah. me tell you. So I grew up in Sweden, in Gothenburg, the second biggest city in Sweden. And we um, grew up with a lot of seafood. My grandmother was oh. really a good cook. My mom was not. So we used to do two dinners, me and my sisters, right? The key was we eat with mom and dad, bike over to grandma's house, and then, then have eat. dinner. Oh my and, gosh, and that's hilarious. Like, so now wait, how did you slice? I want to see your technique for this. Uh, yes, you can. Or did you mandolin it again? You mandolin again. Right, you know what, I'm not, I'm going back to face the monster. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm not going to be scared. Okay, I'm going to try it now. And, you know, like... But you kind of, actually, for the recipe, you do need it. Yeah. Right? Because you want these for the gratin. Exactly. We want a very thin... I guess the trick is don't put your fingers in it. Let me say yeah. just cheers again. Cheers again. When, when I say glug, you Boom. say chug. Okay. Mmm. Yeah. I mean, that is delicious. Delicious. Okay, now let's do apples. Yeah, let's, you, we can peel the apples yeah, however you want to do it. How are we cutting this? So, we can just cut it down into pieces like this. Okay. Right? You got it. Mm-hmm. And okay. yeah, good. And then, but are we doing big chunks? Like yeah, how, yeah, we're gonna do a bunch Show of me. stuff. So first, we're gonna get the potatoes off okay. the cutting board. Okay. I love it. Okay. And then you see what you're dealing you're with here. Take, okay. You want to kind of take that piece off, mm. and then you can just slice them down, mm. right? Oh, now you're showing off. No, we're gonna go slow. So good. Okay. But you wouldn't mandolin those. You could. Oh, look at you. Well, now I I'm give you like one fancy I know, tool. Like, but now I'm kind of into you it. You could do the mandolin with them. Yes, absolutely. Which way would you go, though? Yeah, but this is no, no. This is where it gets dangerous. We're just Don't gonna go, go old. School. Yes, exactly. Nice. Yeah, I gotta get you, in no, this. You know, you gotta get the gloves. That's one thing I really I learned. I heard you like the glove Well, lady. sometimes I do, but you know why? Because I'm often bleeding. So sometimes it's yeah. good. But I'm already in it, so forget it. Okay, good. We'll just do it like this. This is what a real chef does, right? Exactly. Okay. And we're gonna I do season. That. You know what real yeah. chefs do too? We're oh, wait, wait. Let me show you my salt technique. Oh, please. I learned something. Watch this. Yeah. Yes. High. You go high. Yes. <laughs> and then it sprinkles better. Yeah. And then I should turn it, right? And just keep it going. Beautiful. Yeah. You go high. Go high. When and always, it feels like you got to be more generous than you think. Like, exactly. more salt, Sorry. the better. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Great. Oh, there's the pepper. Yes. Okay. I like it. Okay, so we're going to blend this up, right? Red onion. And let's okay. make it easy. Let's make it fun. Like, this is the type of dish that you can make with your family and have fun, yeah. right? So we're just going to dump in the onions here. Yep. We're going to dump it in. So we're keeping these separate for now, which is... For now. Okay. Because we're going to kind of build the layers with them. A little, little garlic. bit of garlic. Mm. Garlic can also be sliced. Yep. Just going to do that. Should I spin it? Uh, yes. It all again? Absolutely. Okay. And then... 
We're gonna get our beautiful gratin. Mm. We're gonna grease it up with a little bit of butter. Okay, this is now we're talking. Yes. Is that? Do you leave it out for like room temp, or exactly. does it matter? Okay. Yes. Right. Here's the moment That's where you can actually put more butter in because all of this butter. It's gonna be super delicious for the gratin. Okay, now okay. I usually would use a paper towel here. Yeah, this is a paper towel. This would be a good paper towel. Total. Thing. Paper but towel. we don't have one. Okay. Doesn't it gonna... feel good to butter okay, in really your hand? It really kind of does, does, though. Actually, it's quite satisfying. It's nice. Look at that. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank nice. you. Nice. You know what's fun about this is that this is something you can do with a family. Yeah. Right? Okay. You can build, and it doesn't have to be precise. So we're gonna take this is a blend now with yeah. onion, garlic. Apples, yep. beautifully cut by good. SG herself, right? <laughs> and then we can just layer it out like okay, this. So go ahead, see. go ahead. And how thick a layer? Am I doing, is it going to be like potato, then sweet potato, or am I going to do like three layers or we four? We can do one layer. This is one layer. Okay, because so now do I just throw these right on? Yeah, put them okay. on. And you know, I'm just going to fly in a little bit of fancy stuff. Okay, like some, you, we just brought sprigs. Flavors. One yeah. of those sprigs, is that rosemary? It is thyme, the other one. <laughs> yeah, the cuz, the cuz, the cuz to rosemary. Like that basil? No, yeah, basil. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything's basil, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to sprinkle in some okay. great mm -hmm. thyme in here. It could be your favorite herb. It could be rosemary, but then you got to chop it up. No, I don't want to chop. No. We've already, we've already chopped enough. Exactly. Okay. We mandolin enough. This is a good layer, don't you think? Yeah, it's a okay. great layer, and it's also fun to make. Like yeah. Oh, well, my kids could do this. And that's how I started to cook with my grandmother back in Sweden. It was like rolling the meatballs, the chemical meatball competition, or oh. like, do you know what I mean? Like, yes. you have to make it fun. Now we're just going to drizzle in this fancy. What is that? Heavy some cream? Some heavy cream. Yeah. And oh again, it's the holiday. That you do not have to be super healthy. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna be delicious. And again, this gratin all year around. It is absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to wow food. the guests with this. And okay. you have experience with this. What? You just did this with ham. Covering you know? dishes. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, it was my minor in college. Yeah. <laughs> it's important that we cover it because we don't want. Right now, we're just all about baking the potatoes to so make sure the gratin comes together. Yes. And then the next layer is all about that texture and the crunchiness. So the yeah. covering it what just helps it cook faster. It helps. It, it kind of steams in there, mm. but also it's gonna cook through without getting any color on it. Okay. Now do I have to stir or anything? Uh, nope. Okay. Just no let it ride. Let it ride. Yeah. In so. you go. Ta-da! Oh my, this the is glaze. The, the glaze. This is the how glaze. we're gonna make that ham. Yes. Chef's kiss. Do you ever do that? Chef's kiss. No, but I'm gonna okay. do. I'm gonna do chef kiss. Mm. So pineapple juice. We're just gonna yes. pour that in. But look at that. I can just buy that at the store, right? You're not making me squeeze no, pineapple. No, we're not yeah. squeezing pineapple. I don't want today. a juice. And the key thing with the glaze is to really reduce it so you get down to that beautiful syrup and okay. the way texture a gla glaze should be. We're on a high heat here. Yeah, okay. we're, we're gonna bring this up. Taste that. Stick your finger in it. This is Aleppo chilies. It's, it's citrusy. It's a little bit of heat. Mm -hmm, I like. Right? Okay. How so much? Just, just add in some. See, that's the thing with you, yeah. It's add in some. Yeah, like, no, it. how much? Like a teaspoon? Yeah. Like, is that too Perfect. much? No. Sprinkle it in? Yeah. Okay. Add right. it in. And then we're going to bring that to a boil. Mm -hmm. Then I'm adding in some cumin. Mm -hmm. Taste okay. this as well. Cumin is wonderful. Okay. Like, I find a lot in Middle Eastern cooking. Right? Oh, I like that. It's beautiful, right? It's yes. not spicy. Okay. I'm just going to. What am I just yeah, add some? In. Yeah. And I'm gonna add in a cinnamon stick, okay. just like that. I mean, how do you know if you've overdone it? Like, what are these things? These are cloves. Oh, just cloves. smell that. Oh, yeah. That's very holiday for me. Well, how many of these do I throw in <laughs> uh, there? Two. Oh, shoot, I just yeah, spent I like love eight. It. And that's a lot. <laughs> okay. Because cloves can also numb you. Should we spin it? Spin no, we'll be all right. no, we're gonna be alright. Sure? We're gonna be alright. Yeah, See, you were like, out. add some, and then yeah. I did, yeah, and, and then I, it was. And I'm taking them out. Yeah. So we're all good. So on your side there, okay. you have a little bit of soy, a little bit of maple syrup. So and now is this another just sprinkle it on it? Yeah, add it in, absolutely. Okay, soy. So it gives us soft, right? Yes. So Savannah, so we can all taste five things, and that's what we're building to to this thing. Okay. We can all taste salt, that's your soy. Yeah. Sweet, that's your maple syrup. Okay. Right? How much of that? Should I be stirring this whole time? And no, this you is don't. hot. Is it coming mind. to a boil? Yeah. That's okay. Maple syrup. Sour, that's your pineapple, mm -hmm. right? And then you have bitter. It's okay. a little bit of bitter in there, right? Okay. And then Umami. And this whole dish is going to be umami. 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 Yes. Remind all of us at home what well, umami like is. It's savory. Again. It's yeah. not. It's not. How much oil? Just a little bit. Perfect. It's perfect with glaze. So we're cooking this down, right? The mustard is going to help over that. Mm -hmm. But even more, we have miso here. This is oh. fermented Japanese uh, soy paste. But nice. we've ever read it, we have miso soup, right? Yes, love that. That's probably where you can taste the umami flavor more than anything. Okay. That's Farm. like the classic yes. umami. Okay. We're going to let this reduce down. Okay. We're going to add in the garlic. Okay, we'll add all of this? All of it, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Now, when you say reduce down, yeah. what does that mean really? That's a great question because uh, a glaze, right? Kind of what you want to put the glaze on with 
either a spoon or you want to put it on with a brush, right? Yeah. So you kind of have to get sticky and sweet. Otherwise, it's going to fall down and it's not going to glaze. Yeah. It's just going to be burnt on Too the tray. Too brothy. Exactly. Yeah. So you want that. You really want the maple syrup and the sugar here and the pineapple juice to reduce down. Mm -hmm. Once that's kind of like nice and syrupy, then we add in mustard, okay, which works great on ham. Oh yeah. And then the miso. Like right now, it's not really reduced. It's, it's not ready, but we don't have to stir it. We can. Oh okay. You know, we can leave it there. It's going to be okay. great, right? But you can also start smelling that. It, it smells, smells that. incredible. So I'm going to teach you a Swedish word. Okay. Skål. What does that mean? Skål means cheers. 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 Skål. So now it's actually the bubbles, like now it's actually start to happen. Yes. You can see, and we're gonna let it go maybe just for three, four more minutes. Mm -hmm. Then it's ready. And you smell that. I, it Doesn't smells it smell great? It's delicious. I heard about this. Let me show you. The SG box. This SG box of students, and look, it's all decorated. It's yeah. dusted up for the holiday for Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Oh, see, I see, now I see what we're seeing. And now it's glazy. Yes, now it's glazy. This I, is incredible. Can we try it? Here, let me give you a spoon. Oh, well, let's put this in I first. That. Okay. Nice. So we're gonna add That's in our miso. miso. Right? Mm -hmm. And then we're also going to add in mustard. Okay. You got spoons in there. I'm just doing it like this. Nice. Is that Great. all right? Perfect. Just keep it messy. Perfect. Okay. And then yeah. it's stirred around. Right it's a perfect glaze, mm -hmm. right? And that's going to stick on our hand. I mean, this smells delicious. How do you yeah. like, how do you think it? Is it I think you're doing great. incorporated in there? Yeah, it's perfect. What's that thing? I'm going to turn it off. Because it's ready. Okay. Should we taste? We can, absolutely. No. It has a lot mm. of, do you feel the funk? That's the miso. Right? I love it. I mean, that, that the mustard and the miso mm -hmm. just takes it to the next level. Yes. level. It's like you have like, it's you get one flavor and then yes. you get the next and it's a, it's a and lot. And that's cooking, right? It layers mm. of great flavors and taste. That is amazing. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a big pineapple fan. I was yeah. a little worried. Mm. This is perfect and beautiful and not too pineapple-y. Yeah, and if you don't like pineapples, you can use apple juice. Mm, okay. Uh, I would say, I mean, mango juice. Something like that has just have a high sweet note. Okay, so this was beautiful. Now, look, it took a little time, so some people might say, if you have this pre-cooked, pre-sliced ham, like, why am I doing, why do I need to do this? Because we're fancy. I know, we are We're fancy, fancy and you want it, like, also, like, if you invite your friends, family, whatever, the ham is already cooked. Yeah. You got to put your spin on it. It's true. Put it does. It's something. SG spin. Yeah, I got to yeah. put a little spin. Yeah. And frankly, you cut all those steps out. It's yeah. pre-sliced. It's pre-sliced. Pre-cooked. So do something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Can you smell that? I smell it. It's so good. I think we're ready. Okay. 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 Take got this it. out. Yeah. Will you close Contact. that for yep. me? Absolutely. I'm yeah. already like want to dive into this. It looks so good. So but. you want to you want to check it first, making sure that. Oh. Okay. Put that nice straight. That I have a nice texture. Oh, yes. it feels good. Okay, so good? it's not hard. No. I, okay, that. So those are done. Perfect. But we want to add some Parmesan. Exactly. Now Make I'd it, like to go crazy on the cheese. Go crazy. How much? Like right? Go crazy. Okay. And with the cheese. Yeah. The the right amount is what you like. Like it should I be like cheesy. I like a lot of cheese. It should be delicious. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. And this is the key moment because now we're gonna put in the broiler. Okay. Cook on a high heat and get a beautiful golden brown. It's Wonderful. going in. Yes, it's going in. Yeah. If it's too heat. fancy, people wouldn't believe I had exactly. done it. High heat. Rust it. Rust. So it's like what, a five minute thing? A ten yeah. minutes? Okay, we'll keep an eye on it. Meanwhile, should we check on our friend Mr. Ham? <laughs> oh my god. And this broth oh, is look delicious. At this. It's so juicy. Yes. Oh, take it out. Should we take it out? Yeah, it's heavy. Okay, okay. Right. Do you want help? Yeah, this no, is heavy. That's heavy. It. But it's just this is a like, I got it. I got it. I guess well, wait. I got it. I got it. I, I'm going to speak You know why? Because it. it's all like, yeah, these gonna... are not the best. No. But exactly. I mean, this is the moment. Now, this is probably a little Check it out. Yeah. yeah. You got it. Now, how do we know it's done? Are we going to do the temp thing? Yes. Okay. 115. And that's going to rise up. Da, da, da. What do I do? Big moment. Okay. Go crazy. Go nuts. Okay. I mix yes. it. Yeah. And, and then now just, I'm just painting. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. Oh, my God. And I should be generous, you right? art class? That's cool. You're so good. You're so good. I'm going to use all, every little inch of it. There'll be no glaze left in this pan. No. Okay, one more brush. You know, I'm, I'm a completist. I nice. don't want to, yeah. How about there? There's a little yes, agents. absolutely. Okay, good. So now, I'm going to take these. Yeah. I'm going to open up the oven. Okay, yes. And Putting it in is easier than taking it out, it looks like. Oh, my God. Please don't yeah. drop the ham. No. Don't drop the ham. Don't drop the don't ham. Don't drop the ham. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Nice. The gratin oh my is gosh. ready. Ooh, it is! Look at that! Look at that! So this is my kind of food. I'm and ready to dive into listen, this. Listen, I know there's a box here with Savannah spoons. Oh, yeah, can we try? Oh, we can. Oh, here they are. It's hot, but it's worth it. Okay. It's worth it. This is the whole point about it. cooking food. Like, isn't it fun just to taste stuff? I mean, it just is. a little bit before everybody just else. Just a little bit. The croutons can also be done a day ahead. Like this, it can? you can pre-make, and then 
Next day, you just pop it in the oven. That Isn't it delicious? Delicious. Delicious. Actually, I usually, I'm like, you take it, but I'm supposed to be learning. <laughs> Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. So, Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Dan. Yeah. You are, oh, I was you trying got it. to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? What kind of training regimen? How you doing, Leslie? Podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. The big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? What kind of training regimen? How you doing, Lester? You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love the ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. All right, it's time for the Brussels. So what yeah. do we do to make them Start with yummy. some butter and okay. olive oil. Oil is really there yeah. for Is that too much? The heat, that's good. perfect. Okay. And the butter is there for flavor. So okay. they do two different things. We cut them in half. Okay. And then we're going to have... Salt? Yeah, just add okay. some salt. There we go. Sprinkle, sprinkle, maybe a little more. Perfect. Okay. Nice. Can't go right. T pepper? Sure. And what sure. makes this recipe so good, yeah. it's actually the combination of the spices okay. and the flavors, right, that we're going to add here. So we got a little bit of cumin. Our friend cumin. Yeah. I smell this. This is smoked paprika. Oh, yeah, I like this. Oh, my gosh. Go I mean, you just know it's going to be good. Right? Now, I don't hear anything happening. Is, no, we're going to increase kind of it. We're going to increase okay. it. Ooh, it's starting to cook now. Look at this, yeah? Okay. And the smell. Can we talk about the smell here? I mean, huh? it's smelling so... So beautiful. Fragrant so, and lovely. So just... Leave the Brussels alone. Oh, I mean, I shouldn't Step keep away from yeah, the Brussels. I, know. I like <laughs> All right. stir. Because we won't get a good conversation. We won't get the color we okay. want. All right? That's a good note for me. Can you just toss in yes. a little bit of this vinegar? Okay. Is that enough? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. And then the ham juice. Oh, ham juice. And that's why we don't need a lot of salt in this because so we got a lot of salt oh, in the ham juice. Okay, so am I doing this whole thing yeah. or just dump go a little? Go ahead, go ahead. Just get in there. Isn't that good? It's great. Well, it's going to make this. Super delicious, like candy, is really the blend between maple syrup okay. and soy. Now this is another, just splash it in. Yeah, splash it in, splash it in. Okay. A little bit more. Really? Oh yeah, my gosh. a little bit more. Really? Yeah, more? That's a, okay, that's, okay, okay. What are you doing? Stop. See? <laughs> I know. This is why I can't, that's why I'm always measuring things out precisely. No, I'm, I'm adding in the soy. Okay, soy. I'm adding in the soy. Yes. Okay, but that's All right, good. good. Now we're just going to let this cook okay, let it down. Cook. No more stir. Okay. Yeah. Put down the stuff. And have some glug. Chill out. Have some glug. Oh, have a glug. Yeah. What is now it? you have scold? a scold. 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 Yeah, uh, you could be scolded, but that's scold. Scold. <laughs> you scolded yeah, me. Yeah, look at that. We are ready. Look at this. Okay, so, oh, it's stuff. ready for walnut time? Adding walnut. Okay, so how much? Just how you much? You know the rule. I mean, how much you want. That's it. Okay. How do you know when it's, you know, ready to go? My temptation would be to kind of cut it so I could see, is it, does it feel like it's the no, right texture? No, no cutting. No, no. Okay. Because it, it, it's vegetables like that. You want a little bite. You want mm -hmm. a little bite. You don't want the mushy. Mm -hmm. And you can tell like these. Feel it. Oh yeah, okay, I see. Should we taste the sauce? We can. Are we supposed to be sauce. tasting things all the you time? You know what? Yes. Mmm. Right? Nice. I taste sweet. a little smokiness yes, too. Yeah, that's the ham. Good mm. for you. Nice. 
I love it. I'm very impressed. I can see why you're so successful because I, you do build these layers of flavor yes. and they come at different times. It's really yep. cool. Absolutely. And then just do a mini taste here and you get the crunch from the walnut. It's a oh good bite. It's a good bite. I mean, Boom. beyond. We're good. If only we had a bigger bowl. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't speak now, but these might all just about fit. So. Who blamed the bowl? I know. That's hot. Oh, that. that just yeah. burned my... Okay, yeah. that's... I think we did enough there. So. Beautiful. Okay, let me just drizzle some stuff. Yes. Some broth. Mm. See? This is delish. Okay. And then we just go high. Look at our babies. You call her politics. You know when they go low, <laughs> we go high. Exactly. Look at that. Fancy schmancy. Okay. This smells go good. They're so pretty. And this looks so festive for the holidays. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love yeah, I love you too. <laughs> the big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? <laughs> kind of training regimen. How are you doing, Lester? Me too. There's only one thing left to do. What are we gonna do? What is that? Let's get our ham out of oh, that yeah, oven. Yeah. Oh my god. Look. Oh my gosh, I wish people could smell this. This she is She did a good job. This is a beautiful okay. ham. Beautiful and pre-sliced. Can Take I get it. an amen? Yeah, in? but it, it's heavy. I know, Be careful. I know, but I want to try. Yeah. I want liquidy. to try. Look at that. You Look got at it. That. Okay. Okay. That's Will funny. you close it up for me? Don't drop the ham. Don't drop I didn't the know ham. I was cooking with Martha Stewart. <laughs> Don't drop the ham. Like, I didn't know. <laughs> like, nobody told me. Oh, my me. gosh. Okay, how this about that? Awesome. Now, yeah. how do we get that to that? There. Yeah, there's a little bit. Savannah, you do it. Really? I'm stepping away. Step away from the ham. Oh, Marcus. my gosh. Yeah, give it a little yeah. tiny step. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, and just plop it over here. Ooh, what's up with the strong step? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Something you want to tell me? <laughs> that was a strong step. Wait, wait. wait. <laughs> I know, I've been working out. Yeah. Can I just do this? Like, yes. I know it's very chefy, but well, show me. you just don't want to throw that away. Oh, so you're going to just like just add it on the broth. Oh. Just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because that's the flavors. Yeah, it really is. Mm. Okay. You missed a sign. Boop. <laughs> boop, boop. What about the front? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm open for criticism. This looks pretty. This is so nice. Okay. Let's eat. Let's do yes. this thing. All right. Can I, can I take it? Please. This you're so strong. so good. Mm. It's going to be good. Look at this table. Isn't it nice? So what should we, how should we serve this? Well, first we start with saying skål. Yes. Still in Sweden with my friend. Skål. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was so much fun. Good I mean. Mm. So just okay. a little bit of that, mm. and now I'm going to fancy it up, because you made that yeah. great glaze. So we're just going to, we're just going to broth it up here a little bit. Yeah, make sure they're generous. With yes. That. Oh, oh. I need to steal a little chef. I know, swirl. a little, a little. You start to smell mm, the garlic. I can't Isn't wait to dive in. And are we throwing some ham on there? Now, how are Definitely. you going to do this? Look at that. Oh, and the wow. pieces come out so nice, right? Because it's already cut, right? Oh, those are lovely little pieces. Oh, yum. Look at that. Perfect. Mm. Okay, that looks incredible. I'm going to cut down. I love ham. It's nice, right? I'm going to tell you something controversial. Yes. I Go wish, ahead. I wish we could have ham on Thanksgiving. There, I said it. Yes. Enough talking. Let's eat. Mm. Cheers. Mmm. It's good. So good. It's good. I guess the bite you eat first says a lot about you. I went right for the cheesy potatoes. No, it's just, that's a good stuff. That ham is incredible. 
The Lay's make such a difference. For you and your family, what makes the holiday meal so special? I think just that everybody contributes. You know, yeah. everybody's there together. It's special. You make the table look pretty. You know, it's just a moment. I'm all yeah. about, like, let's make memories. You have yeah. to create an event, create a moment. It doesn't happen by accident. So, and that's what I love about it. I love it. And How about you? I would start with actually the smell. Mm -hmm. The glug was like, as a kid, you like the mm -hmm. cloves, cinnamon, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we always make cookies, like whether it was ginger snap cookies. Yeah. So it was always this fun stuff. There was always something for the kids, like for us to like nibble away at. And then to see my whole family, <laughs> that, that's the best. Exactly. Wait, Marcus, there's one thing we forgot to do. What? Exchange gifts. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. It's been so fun. This should be our holiday yes. tradition. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, look at this. I know the guy who came up with this great crumbs. He came up with this perfect spoon size that's just a little bit bigger than a tablespoon so you can plate in the kitchen. Thank you, Savannah. You are so welcome. You're so thoughtful. And thank you for all my spices because yes. now I'm ready. Now I can yes. make it at home. I'm excited that I actually have something to offer this year. And this was not hard. No, it helps to have an award-winning chef with you. But I think anybody could do this. And you make it fun. <laughs> Well, fun I can do. Yeah. And only slight injury. Fun. So it's an improvement. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cheers. Cheers. School. Thank you, school. Thanks for doing this, Elizabeth. It's Good to see you. So nice to be seen and be in New York. I have not been to New York in two years. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's since pre pandemic. What's it like to be back? Uh, it's it feels great. It's got it is the city is brimming with energy and I walked around last night and I'm just yeah loving it. Well, we have a ton to talk about. Okay. I think we should start right here on the table. Oh. With Archer Roos. Archer Roos. Yes. Um, how did you get involved with this delicious treat? Archer Roos wine in a can. Um, good wine in a can, I should say. Yeah. So female founder, I was really interested in putting my money where my mouth was. So I, I hired a diverse female money manager and we were looking for companies to get involved with that sort of reflected my values. I think that's something we're all trying to do right now is live a sort of a purpose-driven life if we sure. can. And um, apparently my purpose is wine in a can. <laughs> <laughs> there definitely seems to be a thing in the last several years where well-known people are not just like backing financially or just putting their name on something, but um, getting super involved in the details of how the company runs and being a part of the marketing. I think it's, I think it comes back to that, uh, that word authenticity, right? Yeah. I think that when you just, it's, you can feel when you're just kind of selling something right. and when it, it's, uh, that feels really important to me. And I think everybody sniffs it out now. <laughs> no, you're right. You're you right. know, um, you have to really care, I think, and that, that comes across when you're a little more involved. And when the, the marketing reflects me and who I am as a person, um, as well as the product. People are so savvy. I think you're right. When yeah. a celebrity says, I love this washing machine, you go, no, you don't. You do. You, no, you, <laughs> you don't love the washing machine. I will machine. say, normally I do love the washing machine <laughs> okay. that I'm selling. <laughs> This I can tell you love. Um, you also have this new podcast, mm -hmm. which has a lot of people talking. My Body, My Podcast. Yes. It is, I was just saying to you, there's probably some joke in you and I sitting here, me, a middle-aged man talking about women's bodies. But yeah. um, I have a 14-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son. And as I started to listen to it, I said, my God, these are the exact conversations we're either having or yeah. trying to have or dreading to have. Um, so what prompted you to open this discussion? You know, this exact thing prompted it, truly. I'm a mom and my kids are looking at puberty soon and I felt unprepared. Uh, I really felt also as a woman and as a feminist, somebody who was looking at Me Too and Time's Up over the last few years and coming to my own understanding about everything that's happened to me as a person, as a woman, in my industry especially, you know, how do I grapple with all of this? How do I talk to my kids openly about it? Um, because I want to raise really, I want to raise healthy kids who have great intimate relationships and are not f fearful or filled with shame about anything. Yeah. And we have a very old school way of dealing with sex and sexuality right now. And it's, it causes a lot of harm. And I just felt like if I can investigate these 
this information for myself and, and learn more in the hopes of providing it for my own family, maybe other people want to listen in. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and I, I really feel like I made it so that you could listen to it with your daughter or your son and so that parents could feel a little more prepared going forward. But also because I truly believe that sex education, when done well, has the power to transform people's individual lives, but also society as a whole. Mm. Because everything that we talk about when we talk about body image, sex, sexuality, health, healthy relationships, this is something that intersects our daily lives and we hide it away in a corner like it's shame-filled and we're not allowed to talk about any of this stuff. One study said that human beings think about sex once per hour, your entire adult life. So from puberty till you're dying, you're always thinking about some aspect <laughs> of something. It's constant. And it's not like, I want to, you know, ooh, I want to have sex. It, it could be anything, you know, it could be like, ooh, you know, something on my body hurts or whatever. And it's also important to remember, like, we have these pleasure centers that we have access to on the daily, on the regular. And like, what an amazing feature of our human body. <laughs> you know? And why not use it a little bit more? And if we're going to use it, I want to make sure that the storytelling around it, that we own it. Because as a woman, I can tell you that a lot of the storytelling about my body and how it's used and how I have had my sexual experiences, it, it, I don't own it. I don't own that storytelling. Mm. And that's, that's upsetting as you get older and you realize how many experiences, especially young women are having, where they're not really having any fun. I think young women are taking it back. There's so much more information out there. This podcast is part of that information. But at the end of the day, we have deep-seated and very deep-rooted um, shame around these and stigma around these issues and talking about them openly and the way we do it with young people too even just how we separate boys and girls in health class that's not really doing anybody any favors mm -hmm. you know you you're what you're doing is you're creating a system in which boys are told about erections and nocturnal emissions and, you know, the, a lot of fun things mm -hmm. I was and in girls are told you're gonna have your period it's going to be horrible. You're going to bleed. <laughs> don't get pregnant. Be afraid. Don't get an STD. Right. Don't get raped. It's like that. It's like the messaging is a mess. And then we put them back together and we go, what did you talk about? I don't know. I'm not I, apparently, I'm not supposed to tell you what I talked about. Right. Don't you think part of the process, though, is people like you kicking that door open? Of course. Who, you know, whether my daughter loves you and pitch perfect and, oh, okay, she's saying it's okay to say these things out loud. Yeah. I think that's a part of the, the journey. I hope so. You know, I, I grew up, I had some Dr. Ruth, and then we had, like, Loveline, remember yeah, that? And yeah, yeah. And Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew. And, um, I, and I read Cosmo. And, you know, what I'm realizing now is kids are getting their information from algorithms. And they're online, and they're looking up, I want a healthy recipe. And they're soon, pretty soon directed to like eating disorder websites yeah. or being told that they're not good enough or, you know, in, in every aspect of social media is amplifying the negativity that happens online. You're right. I mean, like so much that's online, it's the job of the parent or whoever to intervene and that's correct right. that early or else yeah. that, that becomes, you know, cemented as the image. You've talked about body image, which is, so, again, I keep going back to the father of a teenage yeah, girl. Of course with Instagram and everything else, it's a tough world out there when you're told relentlessly with every scroll, this is what you should look like, your teeth should be this white, yep. your abs should look like this. Um, what do you say to both parents and young people growing up in a world where they more than ever in some ways are shown what they're supposed to look like? I have a real love-hate relationship with social media uh, for myself and I have a hate relationship with it for my children. So my kids are not on my Instagram. They have very limited screen time and any of that stuff. Very limited gaming, the whole thing. I just feel like that is my number one job as a parent is to protect them yes. from those things. You know, I'm not their friend. I'm literally meant to guide them through life and figure out what's in their best interest and what isn't. And I think the evidence becomes clearer and clearer every day that social media especially, but the internet generally, is not in their best interest. 
in any way. I mean, it's great for information. It's great for buying things. It's great for connecting with your grandma. So I, I love those aspects of it, and I think we should celebrate those aspects of it. But there's a lot that is no good for kids, and I really feel as a parent, for me, that um, part of my job is policing all of that. But it's really hard. I have, I, it's easier said than done. Yeah, no, we're, I'm sort of on the same page in terms of the way we handle it um, with social media. In some ways, though, the genie is so far out of the bottle. Yeah. It's like you can't hide them from everything, and they just see it. I mean, whether it, maybe it's not on Instagram, but maybe it's on a commercial on the show, they, whatever yeah. it is of who I'm supposed to be, it's very in their face. Yeah. I think making sure that you're their trusted adult. So on the podcast, we talk a yeah. lot about trusted adults in their lives. And a trusted adult does not necessarily have to be you. Like I had a lot of, you know, f funky aunts, you know, <laughs> who were, who my mom, I think, could farm out some of the right. information to because it's a little less awkward when you get to talk to your aunt about it versus your mom or whatever. Um, but having trusted adults in your kids' lives is really important. So if, it's, if it is you, great. But if it's not you, make sure there's somebody in their life that they can talk to about these things. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? What kind of training regimen? How are you doing, Lester? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? <laughs> what kind of training regimen? How are you doing, Lester? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Yeah, I love you too. <laughs> You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. testament to your relationship with your mom that she's on the podcast yeah that you have these open conversations what did she think when you told her what this podcast she was, was not that surprised <laughs> <laughs> she was not that surprised she's been my trusted adult for a very long time you know I wouldn't say everything was like an open discussion with my mom but I'm very grateful and lucky I had loving I had a loving boyfriend in high school um I have a great relationship. Obviously, I'm t almost 30 years into my relationship with my husband, who I've been married to for 18 you years. You met him on the first day of college. I met him on my first Amazing. day. I was 18 years old when I met him, and we're still together. But that requires like a lot of curiosity to keep it interesting for 30 years, you know, and and, and open discussions about everything as well. And I'm talking to my mom on the podcast really helped for me hone in on that theme of a trusted adult. And the idea that these are not conversations that happen once or twice, but that it's an ongoing conversation for your entire life, hopefully. Yeah. You mentioned your mom. Yeah. I'm just curious about going back to your upbringing uh -huh. in Pittsfield, Mass. At what point your mother or your family realized that you might be a performer? 
that you might be an actor? Very late. Late, really? <laughs> yeah, no, I was not meant. My mother bought me a book. She bought me Diane Sawyer's autobiography or biography uh, when I was in college because I thought I might be a broadcast journalist like Willie Guys. I thought I would, you know, that seemed like a, the right path for me. I loved Diane Sawyer. It wasn't until of truly like my senior year of really? university. I've been yeah. doing plays my, you know, since middle school. Right. Um, my very first musical was Jesus Christ Superstar. I had broken my leg. I was an athlete. I broke my leg. I couldn't play sports. I was in a walking cast. And I always sang in the choir. And the singing teacher said, we're going to do Jesus Christ Superstar. Do, uh, you can play Pontius <laughs> Pilate. Not Mary Magdalene, by the way. You can play Pontius Pilate because you can wear long robes over your walking cast oh, wow. and sing the song. And I can still remember, I can still sing the song. And uh, that was my first foray into real performing was in middle school because I had to. I needed something. I was a latchkey kid. I needed something to do after school. My parents, you know, were like, you got to be busy, stay right. busy. Right. And I suddenly didn't have sports. I didn't have practice. So I went to rehearsal instead, and that became my sort of my new family. And I carried that through college, and, and, um, but I never thought, I didn't understand this as a profession. I didn't know anybody who was an artist professionally. Uh, I knew, you know, my cousin dabbled in it a little bit, but, you know, you, they were mostly all waiters, you know what I mean? Yeah. I had been a waitress at that point for 10 years, going on 10 years, and so, um, I thought, how do you make this into a life? And um, I got into drama school. And I went to drama school, which I could not afford. And I took on more student loans. And I just thought, oh, man. And then I kind of came out. And I said, I'm going to give myself a little bit of time. But this, it, it never felt real to me until it suddenly was. Right. And so I just kept putting the work in. And so then what was that moment where you said, oh, I can do this for a living. This can be a life. Um, I'm out here. I am waiting yeah. on tables. I've had some brutal auditions. I've had producers say some awful things to me. Yeah. Um, um, when did you decide, yeah, this is something I can do or I want to do? When I was leaving drama school, I came to New York. I had a, a, a showcase, as, as they say, in the business <laughs> uh, where you sort of put on a little show for agents and managers and different people. And a casting director was there from a soap opera here. And um, I they invited me the next day to audition for this soap. I, I, I'd never done a professional audition. I didn't really know what that was. And I got the job. And I, they offered me a two-year contract on a soap opera. And I called my mom from a payphone. I'm dating myself. I called my mom <laughs> from a payphone. And I said, I don't think I'm going to do it. And it, it would have paid all my student loans. So this was very serious, like more money than I'd ever dreamed of having. And it wasn't even that much money. But, you know, it was like... Holy God, yeah. um, this solves all my financial woes, you know? And my mom agreed. I was crying on the phone. I was like, I just don't think I want to do it. I don't know what else is out there. And that was the advice. I was like, well, if you can get this today, what can you get tomorrow? Wow. And um, that's how I've approached this whole life. What, what have I gotten today? Okay, great. Well, what else can I get tomorrow? And don't settle for what you got today. Figure out what else you can get. <laughs> and it's led me down this incredible path where I feel like I've been able to keep a little bit of my dignity intact, although not all of it. You shed a lot as an actress <laughs> in Hollywood. It you've falls done, off and you done. just pick it back up and try and <laughs> stick it back on. Um, so I've maintained most of my dignity. But also I've realized that like it all adds up to something. Every, I, you know, you used to go to auditions and be like, man, if I don't get this audition, I can't pay my rent. Mm. And you, I put so much pressure on that two minutes in a room with people who you don't know and don't know, who don't care about you paying your rent and are just trying to solve their problem, which is they need somebody to come in and be great so they can cast them in this role. And at a certain point, I allowed myself to let go of that pressure and just be like, you know what, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna do the best I can, I'm gonna walk away, and if they call me, great. And if I never hear from them again, I'm going to keep on keeping on because it's already in the past. Hmm. And it really freed me to just keep going forward and not be precious about what I can't change because it already freaking happened. <laughs> Where did the confidence come from to say no to this big I, gig that was going to pay all your I bills and it was on a show people <laughs> knew and you were like, no. Unconditional love, I guess, you know? I yeah. mean, truly, I think that is where it comes from. It comes from 
going to college, my, neither of my parents, they have, uh, my mom has now gotten her college degree, but when I was going to university, they, neither of my parents had graduated from college. They didn't have college degrees. So going to school as a first gen was already like their wildest dreams come true. And I knew that from my parents and I knew that my parents would do everything to make my life better and give me my dreams. And they do it for my sisters and my brother as well. And they're super just loving and supportive. So I think just knowing that like my fallback is like some loving family that will help me. <laughs> it's like, really nice to have and not everybody has that yep. so it's important to recognize that that is privilege that i grew up with um that i now give to my kids as well and to the rest of my family but that chance that i had i was not going to waste because i knew it was special and that it meant something to more than just me i also feel like you became sort of undeniable you were relentless of like <laughs> wet hot american summer was good scrubs was great 30 rock you were great yeah. modern family and people finally were like, okay, she's great. You, Did that feel like a grind through that? Um, it does. There, is a mo there are moments when you, when you realize that um, people trust you as an entertainer. And I think that's really important. Knowing like, okay, if I'm on, you can relax. Like, I'm going to entertain you. I'll make you laugh. I'll sell the joke to you, <laughs> you know. Are you going to watch me on Press Your Luck? Like, I love Press Your Luck. Like, great. I'm going to bring you along for a ride. And I think as an entertainer, that's really, that's an important thing for me is be, making sure that the audience trusts me and connects to me and feels like I'm not going to disappoint you. That's, I take that responsibility very seriously. And um, there, there have been moments where I was like, you know, it's going to be fine. <laughs> I also, I didn't need a lot. My bar was low. Right. I really was like, I learned, I got like my class three driver license. I drove like a, a van in college and so I got like the special license and I literally I'm not kidding you Willie I used to tell myself well I can always drive a bus <laughs> truly I'll be fine I can drive a bus just renew that license <laughs> just renew the license <laughs> pass the <laughs> test again you know I really have come to life with the what's the worst case scenario yeah and uh, it takes a lot of hustle to build that confidence but I've never shied away from doing the dirty work um, and whatever it takes for breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the play. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I play. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. So Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Danny. You are out. I was you trying to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I play. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs>
at some point you make this conscious decision of maybe I'm not getting the big roles that I think I should be getting. <laughs> I like it. You're like you're not an A-list star. Well, this no, is true. no, I tell, com, no, no. I'm, I'm a I'm a worker. I'm no, a worker I'm going bee. back now, and you take control of your destiny. Yes, you start I did. your own production company. Yes, with your now husband. Yes, and you say, okay, we're just going to make the stuff. I got really great advice from um, some incredible women in the business who are a little for, a little ahead of me. You know, maybe a little generation ahead of me, and who's who um were really dissatisfied and and bored they were really bored mm. and i could already feel a sense of boredom creeping in and um i knew that if i didn't do something i would it would fester i would feel underused i would feel like i wasn't bringing my full self to my work and i wasn't accomplishing everything that i wanted to do and um so being able to be a little more in control of storytelling and directing and producing, creating interesting stories that center women's lives and women's autonomy, that became just a, a goal and a destiny for me that felt totally right and again, authentic to who I am as a person, as a woman, as a feminist, as an activist. And here we are. Yeah, I just started doing it. A lot of people ask me, but how, you know, there are actually, there are a bunch of um, actresses who are doing it right now. Olivia Wilde comes to mind, Natalie Morales is coming up, um, you know, but Jodie Foster did it before me, Penny Marshall did it before me. Um, those were my role models. Uh, and, but it's rare. Yeah. It's a rare thing to do, so it takes a lot of chutzpah. Um, and I just thought, well, if I don't try, I'll regret not trying. And I know I'll be bored. Hmm. Otherwise, you have to wait for the phone to ring. Right. And I don't want someone else to be in control of my time and what I do with it. I feel, for me, the d definition of success is control over how I spend my time. Because now I have kids, and I, I want to make sure when I'm away from them that I'm doing things that really matter to me. I have to underline the name of the company, too. Brownstone. Brownstone. Because yeah. it tells the story of the way you grew up, right? It does, yeah. So I grew up on Brown Street in Pittsville, Massachusetts, and my best friend, Soraya, and I used to joke about our lives someday, and we used to think about having a five-digit address because that was the fancy side of town. They had, it was like 10300 <laughs> Brownstone Drive. You know, nobody lived on Brown Street. Like, it's right. a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I love the hometown roots, um, but it, it, I, it was aspirational for me, the idea of Brownstone Drive someday. And living in a brownstone in New York City was very aspirational for me. And I lived in one when I, before, with my husband before we started the company. And so Brownstone for me, it was, just, uh, it was always a meaningful idea in mm. my life um, growing up in, in you know, little, my little town in Massachusetts. And then with one of your first projects, you come out pretty hot with Pitch Perfect. I mean. We are mainly known for the Pitch Perfect franchise. Figuring out how to tell a story about a group of misfits and, and, and that it was those women. I loved those women. I loved, you know, Kay Cannon who wrote the script, um, did an incredible job creating just a group of women that I think everybody could see themselves in. And at the end of the day, like a really basic, you know, boys versus girls storyline that stands the test of time. And people love singing and dancing. Yeah, just a fun universe <laughs> to be in too. Just love singing and dancing. Singing and dancing. And yeah. I think bringing um, a, a lot of humor to that, bringing a, a, an irreverent sense of comedy to it, which is something that, you know, have, has been a through line of my career, my whole career um, in comedy. And it's really fun to put, a, Put out a poster in the world that features all those women yeah. you don't see a lot of those posters and i think it feels very natural but go through all the hollywood posters it's not it really it's it's very quietly revolutionary in my opinion talk about controlling your own destiny then you step into directing yeah what do you love about directing i assume you do love it but, <laughs> or maybe you're like no never again I just did it again. I know. I know you did. I want to ask you about that, too. Oh, but God. Is, I mean, it's especially a, a movie of the scope of a Pitch Perfect movie. That's, a big, that's yeah. a big directing project. What do you love about that? I love the collaboration with the crew and the cast. I like being in charge. 
I'm not afraid of being in charge. And I like, um, you know, I like leading that group and I love offering opportunity to people. I mean, I really feel a great responsibility. I tell everybody at the end of any, you know, the part of the process, like, I'm going to keep working hard to, like, make this something that everyone's proud of. And that is my goal, just to make something that everybody's proud of. It, and to entertain people. You know, it's, it's, I, I've been thinking not a lot, but a little bit as I'm aging about what my legacy is in the world. You know, not everybody gets the opportunity to leave a real legacy. And what I didn't want was for everyone to look at What Had American Summer and 30 Rock and whatever and just be like, yeah, she was, she was cute. She was good on those. She was, she was a good actress or whatever, you know, cute blonde, small boobs, nice actress. Like, I was like, is that my legacy? Is that it? You know, how, how do I take a little more control over what is going on? And also, I'm just curious. I really love trying new things. And I love when people put me in a box, immediately blowing the box open, you know? So I, I made this, you know, funny musical and I was like, what else can I do? Thank you so much. Congratulations on all your success. Thanks. The wine is delicious. The podcast is great. Thank you. It's all happening. Nice to see you. Cheers. Cheers. Wednesday to all of you. I'm happy to be back for another Pop Start Plus. On the show today, we're going to dive into a few Christmas classics. First, a fan favorite, a Charlie Brown Christmas, and then The Grinch. Finally, we're going to hear from Hugh Grant back in the 90s talking about love actually. But first, here's today's Pop Start. Thanks, As Dylan. Mr. Roker would yeah. say, best time of yes, the morning. Indeed. Do I smell like a Douglas fir coming back? <laughs> okay, good. Here we go, guys. First up, that 90s show. The first teasers out for Netflix's reboot of that 70s show. The new series returns to Point Pleasant, Wisconsin. It brings back Kitty and her curmudgeon <laughs> husband, Red Foreman, as they navigate teenagers of a new era with their granddaughter and her band of rowdy friends. Okay, kids, the basement is all yours. Lights on. Shirts on and no dancing. No dancing. You're like the guy from Footloose. <laughs> no dancing, you guys. They go in my room. My foot goes in there. Get out. See you soon. Get out. Don't be a stranger. Get out. Extra icing. That was mine. We never locked the sliding door. We do now. <laughs> Someone tells me uh, Mr. Melvin was a big fan of that. Uh, huge fan. Really? Are you going to watch that 90s Absolutely show? Absolutely. Okay. It's funny. Right. Yes. Good to know. All right, guys. How about this one? That 90s show, it's going to start streaming in January. Next up, the Super Mario Brothers movie, eagerly awaited in the Sobroff household. Uh, get ready to feel all of the Nintendo nostalgia. The latest trailer reveals a fresh look at the recognizable cast of characters set to make an appearance in the film. Plus, we get a peek at how the iconic video game uh, and others like Mario Kart will be featured in the story. Watch this. There's a huge universe out there. With a lot of galaxies. They're all counting on us. No pressure. Great. The Rainbow Road, Princess oh. Peach. <laughs> oh, I had them all. It's Super NES, NES, oh, original console. The little mushrooms go, oh, oh. they're so cute. <laughs> they're so cute. I know. I love it. All right. Uh, Super Mario Brothers movie hits theaters in April. How about this one? Adam Sandler. The comedian's written some of the funniest movies of all time, from Happy Gilmore to Big Daddy. And apparently that hilarious sense of humor runs in his family on Monday night. The Sandman was honored with a career tribute at the Gotham Awards, and this is so great. He let his two teenage daughters <laughs> write like his acceptance speech, which turned into one hilarious roast of dear old dad. That's cute. Just know while daddy is with you tonight, we're doing everything we're not allowed to do when daddy's home. Dare we say laugh out loud at Ben Stiller movies. <laughs> <laughs> the last time daddy caught us chuckling away at the Meet the Parents trilogy, he immediately stormed into the room he calls the Screaming Room, which we just call the Shower, 
<laughs> and bellowed out the phrase, only the Sandman makes people laugh. <laughs> Every funny. other comedian. That's funny. Uh, They're good. Yeah, that's funny. It's, it's, awesome. it's unclear, <laughs> actually, if, if they really wrote it, but if, if they did, uh, Sonny and Sadie Sandler, Red Future in They're comedy. Yeah. No Sounds good. Okay, next up, Batman. Anybody treat a dream of cruising around with Michael Keaton in, uh, in this hot rod? Look at this thing. Uh, that Batmobile, that very one, can be all yours. The 1989 Warner Brothers Ooh. Batcar Batmobile. Come on. Currently up for sale wow, from that. the classic Auto Mall. The glossy black machine was featured as a prop in both the Tim Burton's Cape Crusader movies, Batman, also Batman Returns. Top speed comes in at a mere, this is, I'm not kidding, 25 to 30 miles an hour. <laughs> really? So it's like a golf cart that looks like a Batmobile. That's kind of cool. Uh, I mean, where are you going to drive that? I, nowhere. Oh, nowhere. No, Maybe to the golf. It has a working flamethrower. In case you're wondering uh, where it's been sitting for all this time, it, the car was previous home was stationed outside the Batman roller coaster, Six Flags in New Jersey. It's being offered at the low, low price of one and a half million dollars. <laughs> Something to consider when you're Christmas tree oh, shopping. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, exactly. And finally, this one we've all been waiting for, Spotify, the music streamer just dropped this annual wrapped roundup, sending users all the data about their most streamed music of the year. We got a peek at some of ours in advance. The results were a bit surprising. Craig, uh, Craig had a hip hop throwback as your number one song of the year. Any oh, comments? I love oh, right. Wait, remember? Uh, this I year? love that song. So you know what happened? What? This is the year I decided to introduce my eight-year-old to hip hop, uh, and I used the clean version of this way, song. Nice. He, he listened to it all. It's the so good. <laughs> so good. It's cute. Over yeah. and over and over. Yeah, over and yeah. over again. Yeah. Mine was dictated by my kids too. Check it out. Encanto. Oh, of course. For the win this year. We don't talk about, Br oh no, surface pressure was our number one. Uh, yeah. We don't talk about Bruno was number two. Across the globe, check it out. Here's what everybody else is listening to uh, on Spotify. Top three artists of the year go to Bad Bunny, yep, yep. Taylor Swift, of course. Drake, of yep. course. Mm -hmm. uh, most streamed songs, as it was by our buddy Harry Styles, of Heat Waves by Glass Animals, and Stay from Justin ah. Bieber uh, and The Kid Roy. And that's the latest for you today. Coming up on this Wednesday, Wednesday Adams. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Yeah. Love you too. <laughs> Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Here on Pop Start Plus, the long awaited The Addams Family spin off is finally here. Jenna Ortega has taken on the role of the title character Wednesday this time around, and she stopped by 1A to tell us all about it. The Addams Family is back in a new Netflix spin off series called Wednesday. Yeah, and Wednesday is played by Jenna Ortega. She's a teenager now attending a boarding school for supernaturally gifted out. When her parents come to visit, check it out. <sighs> Let's get this over with. There she is. Oh, how we miss those accusing eyes and you full sleep. How are you, my little rain cloud? I thought thing was filling you in on my every move. I uncovered your feeble subterfuge almost immediately. So how's the little fella doing? Does he still have all his fingers? 
Relax. I haven't snapped any of his digits. Yet. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh, that deadpan. Oh my god, that's so you. You're so good at that. Oh, I thought you were saying I'm so deadpan. No, I get that no. a lot too. Yeah. You do? Yeah. yeah, I get that all the time. So wait, how do you keep that deadpan face while you're going through all this? Yeah, it was something that Tim and I established very early on. She doesn't blink. He likes it when I tilt my chin down and look through my eyebrows, kind of a Kubrick stare, and then I relax all of the muscles on my face. So I go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my God. So, you know, and then you just move your eyebrows, and that's pretty <gasps> but much how all you your not reaction. I'm confused Blinking. how you don't blink. Um, I, I think I got kind of annoying about it on set, to be honest, because I would have to restart a take if I started, because sometimes you start crying. Yeah, totally. It's Romanian winter. There was all this wind in my face. I learned to blink on other people's lines. So um, you were in Romania. You shot this there. Yeah. What was that like? It was insane. I had never been to that side of the world before, and uh, you know, the crew, some of the most delightful people I've ever met in yeah. my entire life, and it was perfect because uh, we did a lot of exterior stuff, so we shot at castles and things like that, yeah. so it fit the, the gothic atmosphere. Wow. Okay, we talked about this a little bit in commercial break, but Catherine Zeta-Jones, oh, who yeah. we adore, plays your mother. She's incredible. She's. I feel like her humor is so underrated. People don't understand. We were on set, and there were some of my favorite scenes that we shot just because she was so open to improvise and have fun and try new things and, and yeah, she just has great instincts. Um, you have a lot of interesting projects. There's the project you, then there's Scream, and then there's like a dark, uh, you, you seem to be attracted to these roles. Scary. What is it about those roles that sort of pulls you in? Yeah. I feel like there's some invisible, invisible string that just kind of connects us Holy because it, they just happen. I, it wasn't something that I set out to do. I wasn't trying to only do horror projects and I'm very excited about it, about it because I, I love the genre. Yeah. Immensely. You do? Yeah, and there's so much fun to be on because everyone who's working on a horror set is so passionate about what they're doing. You know, it's, uh, yeah, I, my greatest <laughs> memories. Yeah, really. sets. Up next, the actor who voiced Violet in A Charlie Brown Christmas takes a look back at the iconic film. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? <laughs> what kind of training regimen? How you doing, Lester? Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. So Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Danny. You are oh, I was you trying to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're back. The Christmas countdown is officially on, and you can't celebrate without that holiday staple, a Charlie Brown Christmas. For our flashback series, Sally Dreyer, who voiced Violet, reflected on what it was like to be part of the film at just eight years old. I didn't send you a Christmas card, Charlie Brown. I didn't send you a Christmas card, Charlie Brown. Apparently, that's the shoe that dropped. So that was my big line in that one. 
Charlie Brown. Oh no, we're doomed. I was selected for the role in Charlie Brown Christmas as Violet. And I think there may have been a little nepotism there, but uh, my sister worked for Lee Mendelson, the producer at the time. Um, I was eight years old. Um, he had been pitching to Charles Schultz for years. I want to do a special. I want, they were friends. I want to do a special. I to, no, 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 no. Well, Charles Schultz called him one day and said, I have an idea, but it has to be this way. And that was a Charlie Brown Christmas, which was very controversial at the time because it included talk of Jesus and the manger and stuff like that. So in 1964, I guess that was going out on a limb. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. But he said, I have a requirement that I only want to use real kids for the voices. So my sister was sent with a reel-to-reel -reel tape recording thing to all the grammar schools in the area. And at the end of a couple of long days, uh, she sat me down at the kitchen table before dinner and said, I might as well try you. So that's how I was selected for Violet. Boy, are you stupid, Charlie Brown. So when we went to record at the time, because I was eight, it meant a day away from school. So I got to get out of school and my sister uh, generally, or another uh, production assistant who worked for Lee Mendelssohn would pilot all the voices in a car and drive us to San Francisco, um, where we would uh, go into, on Van S Drive, we would go up in, uh, into the recording studio and they would take us in one at a time to, to do our lines. Some of us couldn't even read because some of us were five. So they would have to say the line and then we would repeat it and try and mimic the inflection. I'm still kind of a good mimic. Unfortunately, I can't take it on the road, but when I hear something, I can uh, repeat it that way, which I never realized until hours and hours at the recording studio, sometimes it went a little slower. <laughs> And then if there was a group shot, if there was a group yell, so to speak, they would have us stand up and, and all scream whatever. You blockhead Charlie Brown or whatever it was all together. Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown! It was more Lee Mendelssohn and Bill Melendez who were working on the specials. So they would prompt us as to how to deliver a line or what it meant. And so sometimes we'd go into the recording studio one at a time and we would repeat a line maybe once. Sometimes it took six tries, sometimes it took one try, but the magic was always in the editing. I, I was amazed that they were able to link all that information together and make it actually work. I never thought it was such a bad little tree. But when Charlie Brown Christmas debuted, we all sat in front of the little tiny black and white TV and watched it. But I remember as a kid not really being able to relate to what was my voice or what, you know, how it, it just seemed like this magical thing that appeared on the screen that was nothing at all like the experience itself. I told you he'd goof it up. He's not the kind you can depend on to do anything right. You know, I don't relate to Violet as much. She's a shadowy character in my past. I think uh, I was made to do Lucy. <laughs> Charles Schultz decided I had a particular quality of crabbiness in my voice, so, and I was elevated <laughs> to the role of Lucy. In the Charlie Brown Christmas, I was seven, and then The Great Pumpkin, eight, and then memory doesn't serve me that great, but I think in Charlie Brown, or You're in Love, Charlie Brown, I was nine or 10. The first two or three shows came out pretty quickly, and then there was a little bit longer lag after that. So it was a Charlie Brown Christmas, The Great Pumpkin, and then You're in Love, Charlie Brown. And then pretty much I got the ax. <laughs> that was a dilemma that they had is because we all got fired when we hit 12 and our voices changed. So they had to seek out a whole new cast. And it was important for them to find kids that sounded the same. So they really dug themselves a hole because that was a difficult thing. But, but I, I think true to now, even that last animated special um, that was, I don't know how many years, it's been five years or so, those kids sound like we did. And it's kind of amazing. My partner and I have a store in Jerome, Arizona, and word is out, I guess, that it's our store. And I see people wander through with peanut shirts a lot. And 
they just are coming to see or they write a letter and I get I get mail from people who want autographs which is touching but it still baffles me um, and because um, I was just a little kid but but the shows mean so much to people and their family and 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 times they've shared together with their families so they reach out because they feel like I'm sort of part of that isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. I think the reason people love Charlie Brown and Christmas so much is because it's so pure and takes us back to the meaning of Christmas. And uh, it gives me chills, actually. And Linus's delivery of his soliloquy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And I think that's regardless of your background as Americans, it just sort of hit home somehow. Nothing like peanuts to get you through the holidays. Coming up next, Christine Baranski on what it was like to film The Grinch. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? <laughs> what kind of training regimen? Thank you, Aunt Lester. Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT. If you're like, Kelly, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Danny. Yeah. You are oh, I was you trying to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. The big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. We're continuing our holiday journey into our Today Vault. Christine Baranski starred in the live action adaptation of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Here she is speaking about that role back in 2000. In the new movie, Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, we're given some clues as to why the green guy is so, well, Grinchy. It turns out he had an unrequited childhood crush on Martha May Huvier. Christine Baranski plays the object of the Grinch's desire. Hi, Christine. Nice Hello. to see you. A dubious distinction. Oh, the Grinch's but, girlfriend. But what a great role you it's had. It's a wonderful role. And what, a, what an incredibly fun movie. Was it as fun to make as it was to watch? It was, first of all, a privilege to bring to life a classic, to be part of a, a huge Hollywood effort that was going to bring to life something that people hold in such, you know, esteem and is, is so beloved. So there was that, there was this feeling of awe that we're all part of this. Then there was the fun of showing up on what was in effect the largest set ever built at Universal and being part of a production that took up 11 sound stages. I was flown out for like eight or ten makeup tests before sitting down to start filming. We were all in the makeup chair for two, three hours. We would the, the production values were so extraordinary. So you had the feeling you were a part of something just very, very big, very special. And yeah, it was fun. Meanwhile, Jim Carrey, of course, is, is kind of a force of nature, isn't he? Is this nature, not the role he? for him, the role of his, whether he likes it or not, he's going to be, you know, the Grinch. That will be his defining role, I think. He's astonishing. And you, you, you were saying, Christine, that he's not only enormously talented and fun with his mind going a thousand miles an hour, but he's also quite accessible. That you all would talk in the, during them, obviously, <laughs> yeah, you talk, know the great but I mean, thing. he was open to ideas, he'd 
Yeah, I think that what's impressive to another actor is seeing no matter how much money that other actor is being paid, how big a star, when that person walks on the set, focuses on the work, does take after take, hitting the marks, bringing the energy up for every take, just giving a fully committed performance, then walking off after the take, going to the monitor, talking to fellow actors about how can we make the shot better. Then, you know, he lights up his American spirit cigarette with his green, <laughs> green paws. <laughs> and kind of you can sit there and joke with him and, you know, he's accessible, goes back, does another take. And, you know, his energy is so galvanic. He had to just come up to that huge level of energy with every take, in addition to which he was here, Jim, I should get paid for a pub. <laughs> I know, are you his agent? Yeah, <laughs> no, but I mean, the man was covered in green yak hair, oversized <laughs> contact lenses that were oh, I killing know. him. D a double set of double teeth. Double set of teeth. He couldn't breathe through his nose. <laughs> so none of us could complain that we were a little uncomfortable, and sometimes we were quite uncomfortable. Because I want to ask Because he you was like, oh my God. Your makeup as well. I mean, actually, let's go to the scene, because then oh, people yeah, could see how you looked in the movie. Great, and great. unlike the Grinch, Martha May Houvier loves Christmas. She's sort of a combination of Martha Stewart and Jacqueline Bouvier. Yes. <laughs> and her decorations are, of course, because of the Martha Stewart in her, yes. the best in Whoville. Yes. Meanwhile, I wish they, we, we'd been able to see you a little closer up, because you're sort of Christine, but you have kind of a canine lower well, we all were pretty canine, but actually I had to be a glamorous who, which was really a challenge to Rick Baker, the makeup artist. They kept doing my makeup over and over because, you know, you have that little nose and yeah, then that what, oversized lip. Yeah, what was the actually, weird thing? Actually, the prosthetic goes on here yeah. and it covers this part of your face, but then it actually glues onto your upper lip. Oh, I see. So, so you can still have a normal mouth. But this part of you has to remain very still because if you laugh or chew, the prosthetic would crease. So I spent whole days when I knew I had a close-up just kind of in my trailer going, not laughing. I said, don't make me laugh. Don't make me laugh. Well, how could you breathe? Because that I little could breathe nose, through my just, little, the little holes. You had little holes there? But that scene that you just saw was one of the last scenes filmed, and it was shot at about 3 in the morning. And I came to work at about 6, got into the makeup, and then was in my trailer kind of sleeping on and off till about 2 in the morning. And then they called me on the set. And then I had to be, ah, you know, <laughs> Perfect. Anyway. Well, you came across very well, Thank and you, you. look it's quite fetching in your little Santa, sexy a, Santa that's outfit. That's a hell of an outfit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a great, great movie, Thank and you're you. terrific in it. And of course, you're the reason that the Grinch is so grouchy, and people just have to to go see the movie to understand the backstory I and know. the traumatic experience he I had know. as a child. Oh, I know. It's wonderful. Anyway, great to see you, Christine. Great to see Thanks you. so much Thank for coming you, in. Can't have Christmas time without the Grinch. Check out another favorite from the vault, our conversation with Hugh Grant discussing his classic holiday film, Love Actually. No one's gonna fancy a girl with thighs the size of big tree trunks. Not a nice guy, actually, in the end. Mm. You know, um, being Prime Minister, I could just have him murdered. Thank you, sir. I'll think about it. Do. Hugh yeah. Grant, good morning. Nice to see you, Hugh. Or should you. I call you Mr. Prime Minister? If you would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you found out you were playing the Prime Minister, that must have been sort of a, what? Well, I, know, I, I like the idea, uh, particularly in a Richard Curtis film, because he's always given me such loser parts before, you know? <laughs> yeah. Loser bookseller. Um, four weddings, I didn't even have a job. Um, so, and I quite like the idea of being grown up and having a little authority in this one. And, yeah. and so did you use Tony Blair as your role model? I mean, he's kind of a young, dashing <laughs> prime minister himself. And Yes, but no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to keep your job, for one, right? Well, there's that. And uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's totally... Totally invented from scratch, really. Uh, I tried to do some research, but it was too boring. I, re I tried to read a book on politics. But you did? Yeah, I got to page three and threw it away. Have you ever entertained the notion of being in politics yourself? Uh, no, I'm too profoundly selfish. I think you have to have a, a sense of public duty. I'm sure that's why Arnie's gone into it, because he cares. And I, I just don't care. I mean, I think if I was in power, I would, I would abuse my position. Yeah. Caligula would be my model. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about about your character. You say that when you were falling in love with your secretary, who's so cute and sweet and 
everybody, by the way, the audience, of course, falls in love with her because her boyfriend calls her fat. I mean, right. how's that for getting sympathy, right? Very clever, very clever. <laughs> very, very clever. Yeah. But you wanted to make sure there was no dithering and no bumbling. That's right. Well, I, th Are you afraid that you've been called a ditherer and a bumbler too, well, too many times, Hugh? Yes, do you know, I think th those are trigger words to make my teeth grind. It's kind of like perky with me. Really? Oh. You are pretty perky then. I am Particularly not. this morning. No, I'm not. No, you're not. You're not at all perky. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm very unperky at times, but I just don't want to yeah, see that side. I want to see that side of you. I've heard about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, bumbling, uh, yeah, I felt there was a touch of a little bit too niceness in this character as it was originally written. And I had very much enjoyed in, you know, Bridget Jones and About a Boy and those films being a little edgier. Uh, and uh, so I, I made Richard slightly rewrite it to just make him not too lovable, not too the perfect head boy. Do you have head boys in American no, schools? No, what is a head boy? Sort of top boy, the guy, the guy oh, who's... Oh, the shining star. Yeah, the shining star the who class. looks after everyone else, yeah. Which, of course, is Richard Curtis. <laughs> All right, well, tell me a little bit about this movie and it's a series of vignettes about love yeah and and at first i mean you're a little bit uh, on the cynical side yes at first were you a little well uh, no <laughs> would i mean you like it, me to do that again yes i would <laughs> i like that um i yeah listen it's uh i admire the film very much it's not my personal philosophy of life you know the, the whole film begins with my character in a voiceover saying, you know, people think that the world is full of hatred and greed, but that's not true. Wherever I look, I see love is all around. Well, th that's what my character says. I, Hugh Grant, think that the world is, in fact, full of hatred and greed, yeah. So fun hearing from Hugh, and who doesn't love love, actually? All right, people, thanks for being here today for Pop Star Plus. Have a great day. The candles are ready, the tree is trimmed, the presents are wrapped, the table is set. And this year, I'm the one cooking the big holiday meal? Well, I found a little bit of confidence in the kitchen with pork, pancakes, hummus, even watermelon. So now I have a chance to show my family what tasty tricks I've got up these green sleeves. Lucky for me, chef and restaurateur Marcus Samuelson is gonna make sure this is a holiday to remember. We'll be making a spiral ham with a pineapple Aleppo glaze, a decadent potato gratin with apple and thyme, and then we're gonna finish it off making crispy Brussels sprouts with pomegranates, walnuts, and maple syrup. I am ready to shine like the star on top of the Rockefeller Center tree with Marcus's help. So let's get started. Chef Marcus Samuelson, so we're doing it. We have our festive yes, shirts on. Absolutely. And we have a ham. I just love ham. a holiday ham. Can you smell like the ham is over there? But what smells even better? What is this? It's some Swedish glug. Glug like glug. Glug glug, like okay. that. Cheers, school. Is there is there a little something extra in this? Yes, oh, of course. Yes, wait, that is delicious. It's good, it's good, right? You grew up in Sweden and Ethiopia, so all yeah. of your flavors are kind of infused with yeah. this. All in there, confused and infused here. <laughs> yes. I love it. All right, this is good. This is going to be trouble. Let's mm -hmm. while I'm still sober. Yeah. What's the plan here? Our plan for today is prepare the ham, slice the apple and potatoes, build the gratin, make the pineapple apple glaze, glaze the ham. Saute and season the Brussels sprouts. Plate and serve. So, spiral ham. Yeah. So I've cooked it my entire life. Yeah. Done nothing else but cooking. I didn't know what spiral ham was. Okay, thank you. Were you. The one, I don't know what You is, were the one introduced it to me. What is spiral ham? So this beautiful ham that's already pre-cooked okay. and baked, but it's also sliced for you, which makes it much easier. Oh my gosh, that's like right? half the battle. I know. And the key is to wrap up the ham. So I'm going to give this to you. Okay. Just wrap it. Like wrap it all the way around? You can do that. Like even on the underside? Uh, not underneath, Okay, no. okay, like this. So just, yeah. okay. I give you, I'm gonna give you two. Should I give it a tuck, like a burrito tuck? Yeah, like beautiful. This, this is how I tuck my kids in with a blanket. Yeah, okay. pop that in the oven. All right, Woo, it's a heavy one. What temperature did you say? 350. Okay, oh, and I see you've got it down here on the low, nice. lowest rack. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good evening, 
from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. fans ready to unlock our true crime mysteries try dateline premium on apple podcasts you'll get early access to originals plus bonus content and everything is ad free so head to apple podcast now to subscribe top story with tom yamas weeknights at seven on nbc news now this is what it looks and feels the storm zone bigger piece of the puzzle comes. new numbers just out this morning Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Ham's in the oven. Now we're gonna make our potatoes. And since you are now such a good cook, you got uh, all these star chefs coming in here. <laughs> I'm gonna introduce some new tools to you. Oh my! I, what is this? It's a mandolin. Oh good. Did you have EMS and first aid on standby? <laughs> we're ready. We got everybody. Okay, I'm calling. wearing red, so if I good. bleed, it'll just match and yes. blend. Okay, this does scare me. Yeah. So, we the key with the mandolin is hold it here. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then you just shave down like that. Look at that. We got our sweet potato. This potato grass hand, great. <laughs> Mine's <laughs> broken. <laughs> yeah, blame. That's what I do. Blame the tools. But wait, I'm not. Even, why is it nothing's happening? Okay. Dried me doing it no, right. Are you doing it right? Well, you're why doing... is nothing happening? It is. It's it's kind of. Oh, it is. I love that you oh have my... like great patience. Wow. They're so nice and thin. Yeah. Oh my god. I think. But... I, yeah. I just cut myself. No. Yeah. Come I'm on. I know. We need a band aid. Yeah. I mean, honestly, every time, Marcus, every time. But the key is don't, like, do not try to be a hero. That's the key with this. Okay. And if you need to, like, put a big piece aside and you chop it up okay. and put it in the gratin, do that. Does but the recipe gratin. call for blood? Yeah, exactly. The blood gratin is delicious okay. during the holiday. Put that in there. Can that go away now? Yes. That yes. Okay. Okay. Peeling, peel. as, that's one thing I know how to do peel yeah. a potato. So growing up, like, what was the food at your table? Well, like, you know, it's funny you just mentioned that because one of the things my mom would do is say, Savannah, will you sit here and peel all those potatoes? <laughs> it was like sort of that grunt work, you know? Yeah. What was your favorite recipe during the holidays? Was it something like, oh, I remember when we eat oh, this. Oh, yeah. Well, I actually always loved a ham, and then my mom used to make this, um, we called it broccoli casserole. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'm telling you, cheese whiz, broccoli, and yeah. white rice. It was I the 70s that. market. I love that. I yeah. love that. You have fancy word for broccoli. I love that. Yeah, yeah. What it, about you? You had such a more interesting international growing up. Yeah. Uh, if you call Swedish meatballs that interesting, but that's... Well, sort of, I love a meatball. Let <laughs> yeah. me tell you. So I grew up in Sweden, in Gothenburg, the second biggest city in Sweden. And we um, grew up with a lot of seafood. My grandmother was oh. really a good cook. My mom was not. So we used to do two dinners, me and my sisters, right? The key was we eat with mom and dad bike over to grandma's house and then Yay. have dinner. Oh my gosh, and, and that's hilarious. Like, so now wait, how did you slice? I want to see your technique for this. Uh, yes, you can Or did you mandolin it again? You mandolin again. Right, you know what, I'm not, I'm going back to face the monster. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm not going to be scared. Okay, I'm going to try it now. And you know, like. But you kind of actually, for the recipe, you do need it. Yeah. Right, because you want these for the gratin. Exactly. We want a very thin. I guess the trick is don't put your fingers in it. Let me say yeah. just cheers again. Cheers again. When, when I say glug, you Boom. say chug. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that is delicious. Delicious. Okay, now let's do apples. Yeah, let's, you, we can peel the apples yeah, however you want to do it. How are we cutting this? So we can just cut it down into pieces like this, okay. right? You got it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And. Okay. Yeah. Good. And then, but are we doing big chunks? Like yeah, yeah, we're gonna do a bunch Show of stuff. Me. So first, we're gonna get the potatoes off the cutting board. <laughs> okay. I love it. Okay. And then you see what you're dealing with here. Take, okay. You want to kind of take that piece off, mm. and then you can just slice them down, mm. right? Oh, now you're showing off. No, we're gonna go slow. So good. Okay. But you wouldn't mandolin those. You could. Oh, look at you. Well, now I I'm give you like one fancy I know, tool. Like, but now I'm kind of into you it. You could do the mandolin with them. Yes, absolutely. Which way would you go, though? 
Yeah, no, but this is no, no. This is where it gets dangerous. We're just Don't gonna go. go old school. Yes, exactly. Nice. Yeah, I gotta get you, in no, this. No, you gotta get the gloves. That's one thing I really I learned. How hard you like the glove ladies? Well, sometimes I do, but you know why? Because I'm often bleeding. So sometimes it's yeah. good. But I'm already in it, so forget it. Okay, good. We'll just do it like this. This is what a real chef does, right? Exactly. Okay. And we're gonna I do season. That. You know what real yeah. chefs do too? We're oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me show you my salt yeah. technique. Yeah. Oh, please. I learned something. Watch this. Yeah. Yes. High. You go high. Yes. <laughs> and then it sprinkles better. Yeah. And then I should turn it right and just keep it going. Beautiful. Yeah. You go high. Go high. When and always, it feels like you got to be more generous than you think. Like exactly. more salt the better. Yeah. Okay. Great. Oh, there's the pepper. Yes. Okay. I like it. Okay, so we're gonna blend this up, right? Red onion. And let's okay. make it easy. Let's make it fun. Like this is the type of dish that you can make with your family and have fun. Yeah. Right. So we're just gonna dump in the onions here. Yeah. We're Love it. Dump it in. So we're keeping these separate for now, which is for now. Okay. Because we're gonna kind of build the layers with them. Little, little bit of garlic. Mm. Garlic can also be sliced. Yep. Just gonna do that. Should I spin it? Uh, yes. Pass it all again? Absolutely. Okay. And then we're gonna get our beautiful gratin. Mm. We're gonna grease it up with a little bit of butter. Okay. This is now we're talking. Yes. Is that? Do you leave it out for like room temp, or exactly. does it matter? Okay. Yes. Right. Here's the moment That's where you can actually put more butter in because all of this butter Ooh. is gonna be super delicious for the gratin. Okay. Now okay. I usually would use a paper towel here. Yeah. This is a paper towel. This would be a good paper towel. Thing. Total. Paper but towel. we don't have one. Okay. Doesn't it feel good to butter it in really your hand? It really kind of does, does, though. Actually, it's quite satisfying. It's nice. Look at that. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank nice. you. Nice. You know what's fun about this is that this is something you can do with a family. Yeah, right? okay. You can build, and it doesn't have to be precise. So we're gonna take this is a blend now with yeah. onion, garlic, apples, yeah. beautifully cut it smells by good. SG herself, <laughs> right? And then we can just layer it out like okay, this. So go ahead, see. go ahead. And how thick a layer? Am I doing? Is it gonna be like potato then sweet potato, or am I gonna do like three layers? Or we four? can do. One layer. This is one layer. Okay, so now do I just throw these right on? Yeah, put them okay. on. And you know, I'm just gonna fly in a little bit of fancy stuff. Okay, like some, you, we just brought sprigs. Yeah. One of those sprigs, that rosemary? It is thyme. The other one. <laughs> yeah, the cuz, the cuz, the cuz to rosemary. Like that basil? No, yeah, basil. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's basil, right? Yeah. So I'm just gonna sprinkle in some okay. great mm -hmm. thyme in here. It could be your favorite herb. It could be rosemary, but then you gotta chop it up. No, I don't wanna chop. No. We've already, we've already chopped enough. Exactly. Okay. We mandolin enough. This is a good layer, don't you think? Yeah, it's a okay. great layer, and it's also fun to make. Like yeah. Oh, well, my kids could do this. And that's how I started to cook with my grandmother back in Sweden. It was like rolling the meatballs, the chemical meatball competition, or oh. like, do you know what I mean? Like, yes. you have to make it fun. Now we're just gonna drizzle in this fancy. What is that? Heavy some cream? Some heavy cream. Yeah. And again, oh it's gosh. the holidays. You do not have to be super healthy. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna be delicious. And again, this gratin, all year around. It is absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to wow food. the guests with this. Well, and you have experience with this. What? You just did this with ham. Covering no? dishes? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, it was my minor in college. Yeah. <laughs> it's important that we cover it because we don't want, right now we're just all about baking the potatoes to so making sure the gratin comes together. Yes. And then the next layer is all about that texture and the crunchiness. So the yeah. covering it what, just helps it cook faster? It helps, it, it kind of steams in there, mm. but also it's gonna cook through without getting any color on it. Okay. Now do I have to stir or anything? Uh, nope. Okay, just no let it ride, let it ride. Yeah. In so. you go. Ta-da! Oh my, this the is glaze. The, the glaze. This is the how glaze. we're gonna make that ham. Yes. Chef's kiss. Do you ever do that? Chef's kiss. No, but I'm gonna okay. do. I'm gonna do chef kiss. Mm. So pineapple juice. We're just gonna yes. pour that in. But look at that. I can just buy that at the store, right? You're not making me squeeze no, pineapple. No, we're not yeah. squeezing pineapple. I don't want today. a juice. And the key thing with the glaze is to really reduce it so you get down to that beautiful syrup and okay. the way texture a gla glaze should be. We're on a high heat here. Yeah, okay. we're, we're gonna bring this up. Taste that. Stick your finger in it. This is Aleppo chilies. It's, it's citrusy. It's a little bit of heat. Mm -hmm, I like. Right? Okay. How so much? Just, just add in some. See, that's the thing with these yeah. chefs. It's add in some. Yeah, like, no, it. how much? Like a teaspoon? Yeah. Like, is that too Perfect. much? No. Sprinkle it in? Yeah. Okay. Add right. it in. And then we're going to bring that to a boil. Mm -hmm. Then I'm adding in some cumin. Mm -hmm. Taste okay. this as well. Cumin is wonderful. Okay. Right? I find a lot in Middle Eastern cooking. Right? Oh, I like that. It's beautiful, right? It's yes. not spicy. Okay. I'm just going to. What am I just yeah, add some? In. Yeah. And I'm gonna add in a cinnamon stick, okay. just like that. I mean, how do you know if you've overdone it? Like, what are these things? These are cloves, and oh, just cloves. smell that. Oh, yeah. That's very holiday for me. Well, how many of these do I throw in <laughs> uh, there? Two. Oh, shoot, I just yeah, spent I like love eight. It. And that's a lot, <laughs> Okay. because cloves can also numb you. Should we spin it? Spin no, we'll be all right. no, we're gonna be alright. Sure? We're gonna be alright. Yeah, See, you were like, out. add some, and then yeah. I did, yeah, and, and then I, it was... And I'm taking them out, so yeah. we're all good. So on your side there, okay. you have a little bit of soy, a little bit of maple syrup. So and now is this another just sprinkle it on yeah, in? Yeah, add it in, absolutely. Okay, soy. Soy gives us soft, right? Yes. So, 
So then we can all taste five things, and that's what we're building to to this thing. Okay. We can all taste salt. That's your soy. Yeah. Sweet. That's your maple syrup. Okay. Right. How much of that? Should I be stirring this whole time? And no, this you is don't. Hot. Is it coming mind. to a boil? Yeah. That's okay. Maple syrup. Sour. That's your pineapple, mm -hmm. right? And then you have bitter. Just okay. a little bit of bitter in there, right? Okay. And then. Umame, and this whole dish is gonna be umame. 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 Yes. Remind all of us at home what it's umame like is. Savory. Again. It's yeah. not. It's not. How much oil? Just a little bit. Perfect. It's perfect with glaze. So we're cooking this down, right? The mustard's gonna help over that. Mm -hmm. But even more, we have miso here. This is oh. fermented Japanese uh, soy paste. But nice. all, we've ever had. We had miso soup. Right? Yes, love that. That's probably where you can taste the umame flavor more than. Anything. Okay. That's Parm like the classic umami. Yes. Okay. We're gonna let this reduce down. Okay. We're gonna add in the garlic. Okay, we'll add all of this? All of it, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Now when you say reduce down, yeah. what does that mean really? That's a great question because uh, a glaze, right? Kind of what you wanna put the glaze on with either a spoon or you wanna put it on with a brush, right? Yeah. So you kinda have to get sticky and sweet. Otherwise it's gonna fall down and it's not gonna glaze, yeah. it's just gonna be burnt on Too the tray. Too brothy, exactly. yeah. So you want that, you really want the maple syrup and the sugar here and the pineapple juice to reduce down. Mm -hmm. Once that's kind of like nice and syrupy, then we add in mustard, okay, which works great on ham. Oh yeah, and then the miso. Like right now, it's not really reduced. It's, it's not ready, but we don't have to stir it. We can, oh okay, you know, we can leave it there. It's gonna be okay. great, right? But you can also start smelling that. It, it smells, smells that. incredible. So I'm gonna teach you a Swedish word. Okay. Skål. What does that mean? Skål means cheers. 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 Skål. So now it's actually the bubbles, like now it's actually start to happen. Yes. You can see, and we're gonna let it go maybe just for three, four more minutes. Mm -hmm. Then it's ready. And you smell that. I, it Doesn't smells it smell great? It's delicious. I heard about this. Let me show you. The SG box. This SG box of students, and look, it's all decorated. It's yeah. dusted up for the holiday for Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Oh, see, I see, now I see what we're seeing. And now it's glazy. Yes, now it's glazy. This is incredible. Can we try it? Here, let me give you a spoon. Thank oh, well, let's put much. this in I first. Okay. That. Nice. So we're gonna add That's in our miso. miso. Right? Mm -hmm. And then we're also gonna add in mustard. Okay. You got spoons in there. I'm just doing it like this. Nice. Is that Great. all right? Perfect. Just keep it messy. Perfect. Okay. And then yeah. it's stirred and ran up. It's a perfect glaze, mm -hmm. right? And that's gonna stick on our hand. I mean, this smells delicious. How do you yeah. like, how do you think it? Is it I think you're doing incorporated great. in there? Yeah, it's perfect. What's that thing? I'm gonna turn it off. Because okay. it's ready. Okay. Should we taste? We can, absolutely. No. It has a lot mm. of, do you feel the funk? That's the miso, right? I love it. I mean, that, that the mustard and the miso mm. just takes it to the next level. Yes. Level. It's like you have like, it's you get one flavor and then yes. you get the next and it's a, it's a and lot. And that's cooking, right? It layers mm. of great flavors and taste. That is amazing. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a big pineapple fan. I was yeah. a little worried. Mm. This is perfect and beautiful and not too pineapple-y. Yeah, and if you don't like pineapples, you can use apple juice. Mm, okay. Uh, I would say, I mean, mango juice. Something like that has just have a high sweet note. Okay, so this was beautiful. Now, look, it took a little time, so some people might say, if you have this pre-cooked, pre-sliced ham, like, why am I doing, why do I need to do this? Because we're fancy. I know, we are We're fancy, fancy and you want it, like, also, like, if you invite your friends, family, whatever, the ham is already cooked. Yeah. You gotta put your spin on it. It's true, put it does, it's something. SG spin. Yeah, I gotta yeah. put a little spin. Yeah. And frankly, you cut all those steps out, it's yeah. pre-sliced. It's pre-sliced. Pre-cooked, so do something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Can you smell that? I smell it, it's so good. I think we're ready. Okay, okay, okay. Take Got this it. out. Yeah, will you close Contract. that for yep. me? absolutely. I'm yeah. already like, wanna dive into this, it looks so good. So but. you wanna you wanna check it first, making sure that. Oh, okay. Put that nice straight. That I have a nice texture. Oh, yeah. it feels good. Okay, so good? it's not hard. No. I, okay, that, so those are done. Perfect. But we want to add some Parmesan. Exactly. Now, Make I'd it, like to go crazy on the cheese. Go crazy. How much? Like, right? Go crazy. Okay. And with the cheese, yeah. the, the right amount is what you like. Like, it should I be like cheesy. I like a lot of cheese. It should be delicious, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. And this is the key moment, because now we're going to put in the broiler. Okay. Cook on a high heat and get a beautiful golden brown. It's Wonderful. going in. Yes, it's going in. Yeah. If it's too heat. fancy, people wouldn't believe I had exactly. done it. High heat. Rust it. Rust. So it's like what, a five minute thing? A ten yeah. minutes? Okay, we'll keep an eye on it. Meanwhile, should we check on our friend Mr. Ham? <laughs> oh my god. And this broth oh, is look delicious. At this. It's so yes. Oh, take this it is, out. Should we take it out? Yeah, it's heavy. Okay, okay. Right. Do you want help? Yeah, this no, is heavy. That's heavy. It. But it's just this is a like, I got it. I got it. I guess well, wait. I got it. I got it. I, I'm going to speak You know why? Because it. it's all like, yeah, these gonna... are not the best. No. But exactly. I mean, this is the moment. Now, this is probably a little Check it out. Yeah. yeah. You got it. Now, how do we know it's done? Are we going to do the temp thing? Yes. Okay. 115. 
and that's gonna rise up. Da -da -da! What do I do? Big moment. Okay. Go crazy, go nuts. Okay. I mix yes. it. Yeah. And, and then now just, I'm just painting. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. Oh my god. And I should be generous, Did you take right? Art class in <laughs> school. You're so good. You're so good. <laughs> I'm gonna just use all, every little use inch it. of it. There'll be no glaze left in this pan. No. Okay, one more brush. You know, I'm, I'm a completist. I nice. don't want to, yeah. How about there? There's a little yes, agents. absolutely. Okay, good. So now, I'm going to take these. Yeah. I'm going to open up the other. Okay, yes. And Putting it in is easier than taking it out, it looks like. Oh, my God. Please don't yeah. drop the hand. No. Don't drop the hand. Don't drop the don't hand. Don't drop the hand. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Nice. The gratin oh my is gosh. ready. Ooh, it is! Look at that! Look at that! So this is my kind of food. I'm and ready to dive into listen, this. Listen, I know there's a box here with Savannah spoons. Oh, yeah, can we try? Oh, we can. Oh, here they are. It's hot, but it's worth it. Okay. It's worth it. This is the Let's whole point about it. cooking food. Like, isn't it fun just to taste up? I mean, it just is. Just a little bit before everybody just else. Just a little bit. The croutin can also be done a day ahead. Like this, it can? you can pre-make, okay. and then next day you just pop it in the oven. That Isn't it delicious? Delicious. delicious. <laughs> Actually, I usually, I'm like, you take it, but I'm supposed to be learning. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? <laughs> what kind of training regimen? How you doing, Lester? Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. So Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Dan. Yeah, you are, oh, I was you trying got it. to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. But let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. Just got, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Dan. Yeah. You are, oh, I was you trying got it. to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. All right. It's time for the Brussels. So what yeah. do we do to make them Start with yummy. some butter okay. and olive oil. Oil is really there yeah. for is that too much? the heat, okay. that's perfect. Okay. And the butter is there for flavor. So okay. it's two different things. We'll cut them in half. Okay. And then we're gonna have... Salt? Yeah, just add okay. some salt. There we go. Sprinkle, sprinkle, maybe a little more. Perfect. Okay. Nice. Can't go right. T pepper? Sure. And <laughs> sure. what makes this recipe so good, yeah. it's actually the combination of the spices okay. and the flavors, right, that we're gonna add here. So. We got a little bit of cumin. Our friend, cumin. Yeah. I smell this. This is a smoked paprika. Oh, yeah, I like this. Oh, my gosh. Go I mean, you just know it's going to be good. Right? No, I don't hear anything happening. Is, no, we're going to increase kind of it. We're going to increase okay. it. Ooh, it's starting to cook now. Look at this. Yeah? Okay. And the smell. Can we talk about the smell here? I mean, huh? it's smelling so... So beautiful. Fragrant so, and lovely. So just leave the Brussels alone. Oh, I mean, I shouldn't Step be away from yeah, the Brussels. I know. I like All right. stir. Because we won't get a good conversation. We won't get the color we okay. want. All right? That's a good note for me. Can you just toss in yes. a little bit of this vinegar? Okay. Is that enough? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. And then the ham juice. Oh, ham juice. And that's why we don't need a lot of salt in this because so we got a lot of salt oh, in the ham juice. Okay. So am I doing this whole thing yeah. or just dump go a little? Go ahead. Go ahead. Just get in there. Isn't that good? It's great. Well, what's going to make this super delicious like candy is really the blend between maple syrup okay. and soy. Now this is another, just splash it in. Yeah, splash it in, splash it in. Okay. A little bit more. Really? Oh yeah, my gosh. a little bit more. Really? Yeah, more? That's a, okay, that's a, okay, okay. What are you doing? Stop. See? 
I know. This is why I can't. That's why I'm always measuring things out precisely. No, I'm, I'm adding in the soy. Okay, soy. I'm adding in the soy. Yes. Okay, but that's All right. Good. good. Now we're just going to let this cook okay, let it down. Cook. No more stir. Okay. Yeah. Put down the stuff. And have some glug. Chill out. Have some glug. Oh, have a glug. Yeah. What is now it? You have scold? A scold? Scold. Scold. Yeah. Uh, you could be scolded, but that's scold. Scold. <laughs> you scolded yeah, me. Yeah. Look at that. We are ready. Look at this. Okay. So, oh, it's stuff. ready for walnut time? Adding walnut. Okay. So how much? Just. How you much, know the rule. I mean, how much you want. That's it. Okay. How do you know when it's, you know, ready to go? My temptation would be to kind of cut it so I could see, is it, does it feel like it's the no, right texture? No, no cutting. No, no. Okay. Because it, it, it's vegetables like that. You want a little bite. You mm -hmm. want a little bite. You don't want the mushy. Mm-hmm. And you can tell, like these. Feel it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see. Should we taste the sauce? We can. Are we supposed to be sauce. tasting things all the you time? You know what? Yes. Mmm. Right? Nice. That's, I taste see. a little smokiness, too. Yes. That's the hand. Good for you. Nice. I love it. I'm very impressed. I can see why you're so successful because I, you do build these layers of yes. flavor and they come at different times. It's really yep. cool. Absolutely. And then just do a mini taste here and you get the crunch from the walnut. It's a oh good bite. It's a good bite. I mean, Boom. beyond. We're good. If only we had a bigger bowl. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't speak now, but these might all just about fit. So. Who blamed the bowl? I know. That's hot. Oh, that. that just yeah. burned my... Okay, that's. I think we did enough there. So. Beautiful. Okay, let me just drizzle some stuff. Yes. Some broth. Mm. See? This is delish. Okay. And then we just go high. Look at our babies. You call her politics. You know when they go low, we go high. <laughs> exactly. Look at that. Fancy schmancy. Okay. This smells so good. They're so pretty. And this looks so festive for the holidays. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. So, Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Dan. Yeah. You are, oh, I was you trying got it. to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Oh. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I'm smelling something. Me too. There's only one thing left to do. What are we going to do? What is that? Let's get our ham out of oh, that yeah, oven. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look. Oh my gosh, I wish people could smell this. This she is She did a good job. This is a beautiful okay. ham. Beautiful and pre-sliced. Can Take I get it. an amen? Yeah, in? but it, it's heavy. I know, Be careful. I know, but I want to try. Yeah. I want liquidy. to try. Look at that. You Look got at it. That. Okay. 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 That's Will good. you close it up for me? Oh my God. Don't drop the ham. Don't drop I didn't the know ham. I was cooking with Martha Stewart. <laughs> Don't drop the ham. Like, I didn't know. <laughs> like, nobody told me. Oh my me. gosh. Okay, how this about that? Awesome. Now, yeah. How do we get that to that? There. Yeah, there's a little bit. Savannah, you do it. Really? I'm stepping away. Step away from the ham. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, give it a little yeah. tiny step. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, and just plop it over here. Ooh, what's up with the strong step? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Something you want to tell me? <laughs> that was a strong step. Wait, wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've been working out. Yeah. Can I just do this? Like, yes. I know it's very chef-y, but well, show me. you just don't want to throw that away. Oh, so you're going to just, like, just add it on. the broth. Oh. Just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because that's the flavors. Yeah, it really is. Okay. Mm. You missed a sign. Boop. <laughs> boop, boop. What about the front? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm open for criticism. This looks pretty. This is so nice. Okay. Let's eat. Let's do yes. this thing. All right. Can I, can I take it? Please. This You're so strong. so good. Mm. It's going to be good. Look at this table. Isn't it nice? 
So what should we, how should we serve this? Well, first we start with saying skål. Yes. Still in Sweden with my friend. Skål. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was so much fun. Good I mean. Mm. So just okay. a little bit of that, mm. and now I'm going to fancy it up, because you made that yeah. great glaze. So we're just gonna we're just gonna broth it up here a little bit. Yeah, make sure they're generous. With yes. That. Oh, oh, I need to do a little chef. I know swirl. a little, a little. You start to smell mm, the garlic. I can't Isn't wait to dive in. And are we throwing some ham on there now? How are Definitely. you gonna do this? Look at that. Oh and the wow. The pieces come out so nice, right? Because it's already cut, right? Oh, those are lovely little pieces. Oh yum. Look at that. Perfect. Mm. Okay, that looks incredible. I'm gonna cut down. I love ham. It's nice, right? I'm gonna tell you something controversial. Yes, I go wish, ahead. I wish we could have ham on Thanksgiving. There, I said it. Yes. Enough talking, let's eat. Mm. Cheers. Mm. It's good. So good. It's good. I guess the bite you eat first says a lot about you. I went right for the cheesy potatoes. No, it's just, that's the good stuff. That ham is incredible. The glaze makes such a difference. For you and your family, what makes the holiday meal so special? I think just that everybody, contributes. You know, yeah. everybody's there together. It's special. You make the table look pretty. You know, it's just a moment. I'm all it about is. like, let's make memories. You have yeah. to create an event, create a moment. It doesn't happen by accident. So and that's what I love about it. I love it. And How about you? I would start with actually the smell. Mm -hmm. The glug was like, as a kid, you like the mm -hmm. cloves, cinnamon, all this stuff. Mm. And then we always make cookies, like whether it was ginger snap cookies. Yeah. So it was always this fun stuff. There was always something for the kids, like for us to like nibble away at. And then to see my whole family, that, that's the best. <laughs> exactly. Wait, Marcus, there's one thing we forgot to do. What? Exchange gifts. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. It's been so fun. This should be our holiday yes. tradition. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, look at this. I know the guy who came up with this great crumbs. He came up with this perfect spoon size that's just a little bit bigger than a tablespoon so you can plate in the kitchen. Thank you, Savannah. You were so welcome. You're so thoughtful. And thank you for all my spices because yes. now I'm ready. Now I can yes. make it at home. I'm excited that I actually have something to offer this year. And this was not hard. No, it helps to have an award-winning chef with you. But I think anybody could do this. And you make it fun. <laughs> Well, fun I can do. Yeah. And only slight injury. So fun. it's an improvement. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cheers. Cheers. School. Thank you, school. Welcome to Shop Today. From my current obsessions in Itlist to a roundup of favorites for an instant refresh, we bring you the hottest products and the best tips for how to use them. Plus, I sit down with the biggest names in the business and shop the stars. It's just perfect. And share the trending products that are worth the hype and buzzworthy. We've got it all, including the latest technology so you can shop right with us with just a click. All this and more only on Shop Today with me, Jill Martin. Welcome to Shop Today. It is the most wonderful time of the year, from festive get-togethers to decking the halls. This is the season to embrace joy. And is there anything as joyful as finding the absolute perfect gift for the special people in your life? Well, if you're like me and gifting is your love language, today's episode has you covered. We've got the best in beauty, fashion, tech, and more. And I always bring you the best deal, so everything on today's show is an exclusive price just for our viewers. To shop, simply scan that QR code, text SHOP to 34318, or head to today.com slash deals. The first gift we could all use, more time. Check out the JBW Women's Mondrian Stainless Steel Watches. These are so beautiful and unique and feature 16 white diamonds on the hour markers and 180 crystals on the dial and comes in four color options. Pick up this timeless gift for someone special in your life. Retail price for the watches, $325. Our deal price, $100. That is 69% off. Next up, if jewelry is on your list, make it something extra special with a personalized touch. Check out the Jen Hansen Zodiac Medallion Necklace. It's made of sterling silver with 14 karat gold plating and the chain is 16 inch long with an extender so you can layer with others. The retail for the necklaces, $88. The deal price, $39. That's 56% off. Moving on to a deal you can't afford to miss. 
Casa Bella. You can get the Lace Sweetie or Racerback Bralette. Come in a range of sizes, lots of colors too. The no underwire style made with the stretch lace is designed to be comfy all day long. Retail price for the bralettes, 65 to 75. The deal price, 26 to 30, that's 60% off. Next, here's one that's really great for the winter months. The April Marin Mayflower Scarf Wrap. Dress it up for the holidays or down for heading out around the town. The scarf is a great accessory to complete any outfit, and it's so soft and warm, but light and luxurious. The retail for the scarves are $88. The deal price, $33, that's 63% off. I love giving the gift of self-care. The NCLA Beauty Hey Sugar Body Scrub. The body scrubs are great for dry skin and the brand says will deeply moisturize and exfoliate to leave your skin glowing. You'll get two different scrubs in perfect seasonal scents. The retail price is 72, the deal price 34, that's 53% off. And here's another one from NCLA that will leave your lips refreshed. Check out the NCLA Lip Care Duo. You'll get a lip kit of scrub, silicone lip scrubber, and lip balm in two different sets. The retail price, $48. The deal price, $24. That's 50% off. And speaking of giving our faces the love they deserve, the Trust MD Triple Golden Goddess Bundle, which includes the 24 karat gold rejuvenating face cream, the 24 karat gold peptide face serum, and 10 sets of the 24 karat gold under eye and smile line mask. This three product system has ingredients that the brand says helps with anti-aging, firm. Day 287 for the 95, 25, 16, a great deal. Well, my it list for holiday through the products. On today.com. I'm sharing all the best up your holiday hosting that will wow candles that will instantly deck your halls. And later, I sit down with just Catherine McPhee Foster to hear all about her latest in music and acting and something new. You don't want to miss it. All that and more coming up only on Shop Today. The big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? What kind of training regimen? How you doing, Lester? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The big variable, the storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? What kind of training regimen? How you doing, Lester? For breaking news in our changing world, 
Download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love the ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Shop Today, where we're talking holiday deals, two of my favorite things. I've been sharing the hottest items at prices you can't get anywhere else. The holidays are all about getting together with the people you love the most, whether you're planning a dinner party, a cocktail hour, or a cozy catch-up. There's no better time to instantly refresh your home. But don't wait to get these deals. Scan that QR code on the bottom of the screen or head to today.com slash deals. Kicking off our little dinner party, check out the carafe and cocktail shaker set. These items both feature Swell's triple layered and vacuum insulated construction that keeps beverages cold or hot for hours. Let's start with the carafe. It features a spout and slim neck for easy pouring. This is an ideal item to keep your wine chilled. It's so cute and adds a little something to any table setting. The retail price for the carafe is $60, the deal price, get this, $24, that's 60% off. Speaking of cocktails, the cocktail shaker set is perfect for hosting season and makes such a great present. The shaker set comes with a stainless steel lid, cap, and jigger. Measure, mix, and chill your cocktails all in one. The retail price for the cocktail shaker set is 40. The deal price, $16, that's 60% off. If you have a wine lover in your life or you're one yourself, check out the Society 6 Wine Chiller. The brand says the chiller is made from dishwasher safe stainless steel and will keep your wine bottle cool for up to two hours. The wine chiller comes in 13 different designs. The retail price for the wine chillers start at $65, but the deal price, $32. That's over 50% off. Well, I'm so excited about this next product because what's a dinner party without some music? Meet the ZTech Wireless Smart Touch Speaker. Keep it in the kitchen while you're cooking and then move it to the dinner table when you're ready to eat. Even better, bring it on the go. The speaker features a sensor that reacts to touch. The brand says it's compatible with all Bluetooth enabled phones and can connect to your device up to 30 feet away. The retail price, $69.99. The deal price, $24. That's 66% off. This next item is sure to bring some holiday cheer into your home. This is the Swedish dishcloth from Goldilocks Goods. They come in three different holiday bundle options. The brand says the dishcloths are an eco-friendly alternative to traditional dish sponges and paper towels because they're reusable and entirely compostable. So you'll do some good for the planet and your wallet too. Using them for washing dishes, polishing and cleaning up any surprise spills. The retail price for the Swedish dishcloth bundle is $42. The deal price, $21. That's 50% off. Next, meet the cheese planks and boards from Toscana. I have two different styles, the pebble-shaped acacia serving board and the artisan acacia serving plank. Both of these multi-purpose boards can be used to serve cheese and crackers, appetizers, sandwiches, and desserts. They're not just functional, they also have a beautiful look that makes a great display. The boards come in sizes small, medium, or large. The retail price for the cheese plank and board ranges from $35.95 to $69.95. The deal price, 18 to 35, that's up to 53% off, and look how pretty it looks. This next deal is so good, you're going to want to get these before they're gone. Check out this bundle from the brand Our Place. The bundle includes four sets of main plates, side plates, side bowls, and tiny bowls. Our Place says each item of their dinnerware is hand-painted, stackable, and handmade porcelain. Plus, the brand says they're also scratch-resistant and dishwasher-safe. 
This is an entire kitchen upgrade. The retail price for the 16-piece dinnerware bundle, $170. The deal price, $55. That's 68% off. And the next item from our place is the knife trio. Having sharp knives is so important and makes a huge difference. The trio comes with a serrated slicing knife, a precise paring knife, and an everyday chef's knife. The brand says they're made of premium German steel and feature a grip handle that makes chopping and slicing effortless. The retail price for the knife trio, $170. The deal price, $39. That's awesome and 77% off. And if we all have these knives, we're gonna need somewhere to use them. One more great deal from our place, the Gourmet Walnut Cutting Board. The board is made of American black walnut wood, so it doubles as a beautiful serving platter, but it also features a genius trench all the way around to catch any excess liquid so it keeps your countertops clean. The retail price for the cutting board is $95, but the deal price is $39. That's 59% off. These deals are so good, give the gift of a full kitchen upgrade to your loved one and refresh your space too. Let's move on to the Trina Turk Three Wick Candle. The brand says each candle is hand poured and made out of all natural vegetable wax and 100% pure cotton wicks. These candles come in eight cents. The retail price for the candles, $60. The deal price, $21, that's 65% off. And finally, this is the Smart Heated Mug Kit from Teas. The kit comes with an eight ounce sized mug with thermal sensors, a smart heated pad, a two-in-one lid and drip tray, and a gold-plated stirring spoon. The kit also includes their best-selling self-care elixir herbal tea. Here's how to use it. Pour your hot water into the mug with your tea of choice and place it on the heating pad. The brand says it maintains beverage temperature for up to six hours. And the heating pad is seriously smart. It has a switch, so it will only turn on when the smart mug is placed on top. The kit makes a thoughtful gift for the tea or coffee lover in your life who just keeps heating up their mug in the microwave. The retail price, $79, but the deal price is $39. Well, that's a wrap on our dinner party. Let's run through the products one more time. The carafe and cocktail shaker from Swell, the wine chiller from Society6, the wireless smart touch speaker from ZTAC, the Swedish dish cloths from Goldilocks Goods, the cheese planks and boards from Toscana, the dinnerware bundle knife trio and gourmet walnut cutting board from Our Place, the three wick candle from Trina Turk, and the smart heated mug kit from Tees. To shop these products, scan the QR code text shop to 34318 or head to today.com slash deals. Well, coming up, a special musical guest just in time for the holidays. I sit down for a chat with singer and actress Katherine McPhee Foster. We talk all about her new music and her exciting new jewelry line. And later, let's have some fun with holiday gifting in Buzzworthy. From funky lights to beauty bundles, stick around for more holiday deals only on Shop Today. get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, 
wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> Welcome back to Shop Today, where we've been celebrating the season, and who better to get us in a festive mood than the talented singer, actress, dancer, and now entrepreneur. Dancer. Yeah, wow. it's Catherine McPhee. Foster, I have to add. Yeah. She's here with us now to talk holiday music, motherhood, and a lot of new ventures. You're very busy. Hi, Jill. It's nice to see That's you. so exciting. Happy holidays. We'll get to everything you're doing, but the most important thing to you, that little baby boy. Oh, for sure. I keep getting the Christmas, what's the best gift your husband gave you? And I'm like, my son, that's for sure the best gift. It's number one on the list. You must be so grateful. Well, I mean, just becoming a mom, everyone says, you just wait, your heart's gonna explode. And it's just true, your whole life changes. Well, you have so much going on. You and your husband are now working together. You met on the set of American Idol. Could you believe that was 15 years ago? No, it was like 17 years ago. Wow. Isn't that crazy? I was so excited that he and Andrea Bocelli were guest mentors. I remember the day when I got in my little Honda Civic, drove up to his big, beautiful place in, in Malibu and spent the day. My mom was there. We recorded my first single, which was Somewhere Over the Rainbow. The record label hired him. He was super encouraging. I knew exactly what to expect when we were going to do a Christmas album. I knew I was going to be in great hands. And it's the only time I'm not saucy with him. I just say, yes, sir, yes, sir. Because yes, <laughs> you're like, you you have this. I know you have this. Because when we're at home, it's not quite like that. So tell me about the album, because yeah. I know it's out. And Yes, um, that's me holding David Foster, 17-time Grammy winner, in a globe, in a snow globe. <laughs> Very romantic. We were like, is this going to come off really strange? But we thought it was cute. It's kitschy. David and I were on tour all throughout like late spring, summer, and we were just talking about how he's produced these amazing Christmas albums. And I thought, how ridiculous that he hasn't produced a Christmas song for me. And our manager said, you guys really should just do a couple songs for Christmas season. And it turned into a full-fledged album situation. It's half of the album this year, and next year we're completing the rest of the album. So we kind of think of it as like a part one, and next year is the part two. And honestly, my job was very simple because as a producer, he knows exactly what he wants, and he makes it pretty easy and clear for the singer. What kind of energy do you want it to bring into people's um, homes? I couldn't help but smile, but also David would say, like, just make sure you smile on this line so we can hear the joy. And I think it's really a joyful album, and they're classic songs. David has this theory that most people during Christmas holiday season don't want to hear like a new, oh, there's the fireplace with the chestnuts roasting. Like they don't want to hear a new version of all those classic songs. They just want to hear the classic songs because they're nostalgic, they bring back memories. So part two will come next year. So I'll be back. It went well enough. <laughs> so you're doing so much, but then you decided to get into jewelry. Yeah. What was the impetus behind that? When I was growing up, obviously my natural passion was performing, right? Singing and acting. But I used to love to watch all the jewelry networks with my mom when I was a little kid. And I always like visualized being one of those people that was up there talking about the product. When I was little, I would trade my silver rings with my best friend. So a year and a half ago, I got connected with a mutual friend and we just started looking and searching for people to collaborate with. And I didn't realize it would be such a fulfilling creative process for me. So tell me, what piece should I, I'm gonna, well, as you're telling me about the jewelry, I'm gonna. This is the Imperial Rope chain, which I love. Okay. This is actually the back and the front, if you want, depending on if you just want a plain chain. Okay. I personally love this to be the front of the yeah, necklace. Yeah, I like that. Okay. There you go. Okay, so now my outfit is complete. So that's one of your hero items, but you're actually bringing us exclusive deals for our Today viewers. That's and right. I see your hands are like, and I have that too. I like I a lot know. in a lot of I places. do too. I'm like more is more when it comes to jewelry. So this is from our Blossom line. It's sterling silver base, but they're overlaid with gold or rose gold. Okay. And we have some in multicolors, which are really fun. They look like real diamonds, even though they're not. So that's our rings that we have for a really great price point. Yeah, I mean, they started under $25 on our deal, so that's you can right. pick those up. So do you encourage layering? I love to layer. Like I said, 
I'm a more is more kind of girl. Okay, and then the hoop earrings. These look like oh, they would be heavy, and, and they nice. are so light. I know, they're so light, which is what you want. Like you don't want an earring that's pulling down on the little tiny hole in your ear. Yeah, so these hoops, mm -hmm. so we're also giving a great deal on these, and yes. these to me are like every day, I'm amazing. <laughs> and I love to wear big hoops, like how your hair is right now, with it down. When my hair is up, I prefer to wear like a little bit of a smaller hoop. Um, Got it. Patronizing myself. Now put your hair in front of your ear. I love that. Yeah. Those look very good on you. Yeah, and yes. they're very, they're very light, which I really love. Yeah. They do come in the silver and the yellow and the rose gold. So simple on one side. But then sizzling. Sizzling. Sensational. She's ready to club, you guys. Yes, but it is incredible how you can, with just a few pieces, instantly transform your look. Right, I honestly feel like when I put jewelry on, and if I layer in a particular way, I suddenly feel hip and yeah. cool. I feel a little bit more youthful, and it's why I just love it so much. It can change the way you feel. So it is holiday. Are there any holiday traditions in your family? The day after Thanksgiving, we always love to pull out all the, the Christmas decorations, so we did that. And I throw the Christmas music on. I usually start with Michael Bublé, but this year we decided to indulge ourselves and put the Christmas songs by Catherine McPhee and Dan Foster. <laughs> it's the only time I don't feel weird listening to myself. Do you like listening to yourself? If I'm in a store and I hear like an old song of mine, it's fine, but something about Christmas doesn't feel as... Gratuitous? Yes, it feels okay to listen to yourself during Christmas, right? Especially since it's a new album. Thank you for being here. Thank and thank you. you for sharing your line with us and special deals just for our viewers. I hope everyone likes what they saw. And coming up next, some buzzworthy products to light up any room and holiday hair tools to get you ready in style. We'll be right back. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. So Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Danny. You are out. I was you trying to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Welcome back to Shop Today. We've been going all in on deals for the holidays. And if you have a few more people on your list, no need to check it twice because it's time for the buzziest items all at exclusive prices. Let's jump right in with our first deal from a brand called Captive 8. This is for the person who is on the go and needs a place to store their makeup. It's made of vegan leather. And according to the brand, they have a proprietary tack technology that stays sticky and keeps your items in place. The retail price for the C8 roll-up, $69.99. The deal price, $34. That's more than 50% off. While we're talking about makeup, this next product lets you choose your own makeup bundle in a color palette that works for you. Then goes right into a magnetic storage box, making it a one-stop shop for all your makeup needs. Now this curated collection of essentials includes a blush, highlighters, lip balms, eyeshadows, and they didn't forget the brows, including the tweezer. The retail price, $98. The deal price, $34. That's 65% off. Our next product is giving the gift of connection. Never be stuck with your phone battery drained again because we have the perfect backup charger. But this one has a twist. 
No more heavy, bulky batteries. Look at this. The Clutch V2 charger is sleek and compact. According to the brand, it can charge your phone in 45 minutes. The retail price for the Clutch V2 charger or the wireless charger ranges from $39.99 to $69.99. The deal price, $19 to $34. That's more than 50% off. Next up, let's talk hair. Meet the InStyler Prime Rotating Iron. This hairstyle tool is unique in that it has both bristles and a rounded barrel that actually rotates as you use it. This one tool can straighten, curl, or add wave to your hair while the rounded barrel also creates volume, according to the brand. And by the way, the InStyler Prime has an automatic shutoff. And a special bonus with our deal today, not only are you getting the Prime rotating iron, but the travel bag too. The retail price is $84.98. The deal price, $36 for both. That's nearly 60% off. And lastly, if you're like me, you've noticed all the cool light up signs decorating rooms, and we have found a couple of LED lights that make it so easy to get in on the trend and wait until you hear the price. The love lamp and this rainbow bring cheer and light to any room. Both come with a USB cable, but can also take batteries. And by the way, they stay cool to the touch. The rainbow light can also be mounted to a wall. Let's dim the light. How great is this? We are ready to party. The retail price for the Funky Tree LED love lamp or the LED rainbow is $79.99. The deal price for either $19, that's 76% off. Well, now that the lights are back on, that wraps up Buzzworthy for holiday deals. Let's go through the products one more time. The Captivate C8 Roll-Up, the Billion Dollar Beauty Billion Dollar Babe Bundle, the Clutch V2 Charger or Wireless Charger, the InStyler Prime Rotating Flat Iron, and the Heat Resistant Travel Bag, and the Funky Tree LED Love Lamp or LED Rainbow Light. And don't forget, you can shop all of these items from today's show by simply scanning the QR code below or texting SHOP to 34318 or by visiting our site at today.com slash deals. Well, that wraps up SHOP Today with me, Jill Martin. I hope you had as much fun as I did getting ready for the holidays with this entire show full of special deals. A big thank you to Katherine McBee Foster. She's awesome for such a fun and festive conversation. And thank you for watching. I hope that you found a deal for everyone on your list and that you were able to gather with your loved ones for a very merry and memorable holiday season. I'll see you next time. It is truly the most wonderful time of the year, spending time with family, friends, and the people we love. And how do you show that love? Why, with some sweet treats, of course. Sweets are great. You really can't say no to sweets. Our holidays revolve around food. Everything is food. All the good food, the sweets, the cookies. The treats, the candy, the cakes, the pies. I could go on for a long time. <laughs> Time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. One of my favorite holiday traditions is coming to see this fabulous Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. And folks from all around the country love doing it too. And speaking of from all around the country, there's a baker in Brooklyn who's bringing a little taste of Mexico to everyone who wants it. Don Paco Lopez Panaderia has been serving up fresh Mexican pastries for 30 years and its customers have been lining up for just as long. I've been coming here all, since they opened. They're very well known in the neighborhood, very nice. Well, I've been a customer since I was about five years old. I've been coming to Don Paco since I was very small, maybe like three or four years old. And now I teach across the street, so I come every morning before work. So they're gonna treat you like family. That's because they are family. Hello, oh, Miguel. Oh, how are you, sir? Bienvenido to Don Paco López Panaderia. Ah, gracias. 
This bakery isn't run by just one person, but eight siblings, their parents, and extended family. Para mí es importante dar un, un buen saludo, una sonrisa, desearles un buen día. Everybody has to be involved one way or another. And at this time of the year, it's all hands on deck because one of their most popular treats, Rosca de Reyes, or King's Bread, reigns supreme. On January 6th, many Mexican families enjoy this traditional sweet bread decorated with candied fruits and a little baby doll hidden inside. It's a reference to Jesus Christ, so it's about celebration. A celebration called King's Day, which marks the three wise men's visit to the manger. Now, if this sounds familiar, that's because New Orleans' famous king cake shares the same Catholic roots dating back to medieval France. For the Lopez's, it's more than just a holiday. It's the bakery's busiest time of year, so everyone grabs an apron to help out. We reunite for Rosca de Reyes instead of Thanksgiving. Oh, well. <laughs> so you know you're going to see your whole family at least once a year. Once a year, yeah. I can see my father and my mom very proud to see everybody. He's working 24 hours. We're talking about 30 family members coming and do the Rosca de Reyes. Todos nos reunimos a veces después de no vernos tanto tiempo y todos participamos en un día muy especial y es un día bendecido para todos. What's it like working with family? Because that's a great thing, but sometimes maybe not such a great thing. Yeah, that's that's true. Sometimes we don't agree with everything, but the most important thing is that at the end of any discussion, goodbye, I love you. Is something that we have that uh, from our parents. And that's not the only lesson that's been passed down in the Lopez family. The knack for baking goes back generations as well. Miguel's grandfather was a baker in Acatalan de Osorio, a small town in Mexico. He passed on his craft to his son Francisco, Miguel's dad, who later moved here to New York City with his family. My father immigrated in 1972, 73, and he started working in the um, restaurant business as a dishwasher. But the dream of baking bread and pastries never left him. That's when his kids stepped in. Together, they opened Don Paco Lopez Panaderia. We said, why not to open the, the bakery? So we started in 1991, we opened the business. To survive for three decades, not just survive, but to to do so well, to be such a part of the community. Take something special. What is it about this place that's so special? That everything that we make, everything that we bake or cook in this place, we do it with pride, with so much love. And that family pride is clear in their recipes. So it was time for me to try my hand at making their popular holiday treat. Oh, Miguel, I, uh, who are these youngsters here? Oh, look, Don Paco Lopez, my ah. father. Senor? My mom, Leonela Lopez. Ah, senora. Thank you, senora. Does he remember making his, his first rosca? ¿Usted se acuerda cuando hizo la primera rosca de Reyes? ¿Cuántos años tenía? Oh, choices. Eight years old. You were eight years old? His father, my grandfather, he used to put a wood uh, box so he can reach the <laughs> table and teach him how to make Rosca de Reyes. Who's the better baker, him or you? Yeah. <laughs> That's right, baby. Yeah, still the original. Now it's Rosca time. The first step is creating the ring of dough. Do it like this. Oh, yeah, that's a piece oh, of cake. Piece of, yeah. Piece of bread. And after we have it, we put it upside down to high baby Jesus. All right. We so everybody the, knows there's a baby Jesus in there, because oh, yeah. you're taking a bite and all of a sudden, ooh. Oh, no, 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 no. Nobody wants to bite baby Jesus. Making Rosca is hard work, and it takes everybody in the family to meet customers' demand. How many will you do in a day, Miguel? To satisfy our demand, they have to be almost 2,000. Two dozen? 
2,000. 2,000 a day? Yeah. Two, zero, zero, zero. Wow. Thousand a day. Very good, Howard. But any chance, they're, they're looking for um, another job. One of the siblings don't show up, I'm ready. Okay, perfect. That's good that we have a record. <laughs> we decorate the Rosca de Reyes. I prefer to start with a, with the cherries. Then I can start with the orange peel. Mm -hmm. So basically it's to make colors around. Look at that, it's beautiful. Ta-da! Ah, oh, that's a thing of beauty. And so once you've, you're, you've done this, then will it, do you put it in the, into the oven? Right no, they have, to, they have to see it, they have to prove. Uh -huh. At least like 20 minutes, depends how the weather is. That affects the proof. Yeah, definitely. So that's why you need a weatherman to work. Oh yeah, that, that, that's why you're here. After the sweet bread sits, time to go into the oven. If I can ask your mom, what does it mean to pass this tradition on for her, is very proud to pass to the next generation. Oh, well, it's obviously in good hands. And I mean many hands. And I believe you've got a few other family members you want to bring? Just a very One small or two? Fun. Just a couple? Come in, guys. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Wow, look at this. Oh, do you know? And, and they're still coming. <laughs> and they're still coming. Wow. My gosh. The small family of Don Paco Lopez. Well, this is one heck of a nice, sweet family. Uh, I guess everybody, we should all try a little piece. Of Don't forget, if you get baby Jesus, uh -huh. you have to throw a party. You have to throw a party. Oh, yeah. Wow. And Look, you, so I hope so your father. Oh, oh, oh whoa, 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 I didn't, I didn't see that. Oh, How my gosh. That? Oh. Well, all right. Party at Just my place. This. Here's to a wonderful tradition. Thank you for sharing it with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Salud. Gracias. 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 Al, al. <laughs> up next, the delicious reason Philadelphians line up outside this Italian bakery every Christmas Eve. to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Kelly, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. Just, Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Dan. Yeah. You are out. I was you trying to it. do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. storm surge. Why was it important for you to be here? <laughs> what kind of training How are you doing, Lester? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. When you think Christmas treats, you usually think fruitcake or Christmas cookies. But if you're in the city of brotherly love, cannolis are synonymous with Christmas. Philly is known to be full of grit. We'll get through anything. No one knows that better than Termini Brothers Bakery. Over the last 100 years, this family-owned shop has faced a Great Depression and a global pandemic. But for them, there's no challenge bigger than the holidays. The Super Bowl for us every year is Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve at Termini's is something that is of its own. We got a long line of folks here that have been waiting for a long time to get these, and people wait all year for this special day. Every year on December 24th, hundreds of people wrap around the block to be among the first to grab a classic Italian treat for their holiday celebration. I mean, people drive from Baltimore, 
they drive from Boston. I, we've even had people fly in from California to be here, to be in that lot. People are lining up at the front door at 12 o'clock at night and they'll sit there with chairs and food. When we open the door at six o'clock, we bring everybody in. We're hugging, we're kissing, we have music. People that are unaccustomed to, you know, what Christmas Eve at Terminis is, ask questions like, are you people crazy? Is it that good? And they miss the point of why people are outside. It's a sense of community. It's, it's a Philly thing. As Philly, some say, as their famous canola. There's many, many products that we make that are special to so many different people here, but nothing is more dynamic or special to our customers than our cannolis. You gotta come and get the cannolis, best cannolis around. The shell is never soggy and it's cream based and it's got these little chocolates in it and it's just absolutely perfect. They taste that tradition, they taste that flavor. It's hard to find and hard to duplicate a Termini cannoli. Perfect. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just like get to the point. They have started to vote on the pact. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. Just got, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Danny. You are out. I was you trying to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful okay. life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> today, we are going to make probably about 4,500, 4,500 cannolis today. Hearing my grandfather's story um, about how much passion he had with these recipes, being that they came from his hometown in Sicily, it forces you to to realize that this isn't just a product you know this is a legacy and it needs to be handled with respect and care the legacy of the bakery dating back to the early 1920s when giuseppe termini immigrated to america from his home in italy and joined his brother gaetano here in philadelphia he left his family and everything that he knew to come to a country he knew nothing about didn't speak the language had no idea about what he was walking into. Somehow found a way with his brother to be able to start just a little tiny kitchen and brick by brick grew this business into something that he can pass on to his son. After opening its doors on this same street in 1921, Termini Brothers quickly became the go-to place for all types of cakes, cookies, and of course, cannoli. Giuseppe Termini turned his little corner bakery into a landmark of sweet sentiment. How are you, Mr. Termini? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. People would say, what's your secret? And he didn't get into a real long-winded thing. His answer was, make, make good, good stuff. stuff. Just make good stuff. That's all. 
it was very admirable. Even in his later days, when he was in his 90s, he was working seven days a week. When the store was closed, he would sit here in the store. This was his life. This was his life. Giuseppe taught the business to his only son, Vincent Sr., who would later grow up running the bakery. His sons, Joseph and Vincent Jr., were by his side learning the family trade. We realized we have something very, very special here. So we kind of knew as we got older that this was the path that we wanted to take. Before long, it was time for them to live up to the Termini brothers' name and take over as new owners. My father has that Sicilian Philly blood in him. He's a stickler to the rules. You know, it took him a little bit of time to really trust what Vinny and I are doing here. I remember when we were first shipping out our cannolis, he was so happy to look at the addresses and see where they were going. Today's a little warm up, five or 600. In about two or three weeks, we'll be looking at about maybe 2,000. 2,200 boxes. He was going, I can't believe it. It's going to Arizona, it's going to California. Look, this one's going to Hawaii. And you know, I think it was at that point that my father had 100% trust that the business was going in the right direction. Although some things have changed over the last century, a lot has stayed the same. But this was my grandfather's favorite machine. Is it the most efficient? No. Is it cranky in the morning? Yes, it's like an old man, this machine. But all of these, the benches, our steam kettles, you know, our gas stove, they're all original. Another constant over the years, Philadelphians love for terminis, literally. It's our wedding day, so we figured we'd do what we enjoy. We've, we've tried many cannolis in the area, and probably these are the best yeah. by far. Now Joseph and Vincent Jr. are adding their own chapter to the bakery story, preparing to reopen at its original location across the street, turning it into a small cafe. It says, on this spot the tradition began. Termini Brothers, Pasatoria, founded March 19th, 1921. This is where it all started. This is where it was in 1921. Two brothers and they used to bake in the back. These were the original light fixtures that my grandfather had. It took very, very good care of them because they're very rare. So this is the original deed. This is the kind of artifact that we're planning on putting up. But for now, time to get ready for another Christmas Eve. Termini's 100th, to be exact. It's probably the most stressful 15 minutes of the entire year. Well, we're getting ready to open that door. Is it not? It is. And it's the same people every year, and then it adds on. You know, so if you can imagine over the last hundred years, the line's like down the block. We look at this line at Christmas Eve like they're a part of our family. And I also enjoy Christmas Eve at the end. Um, we normally gather around with our staff, everybody, because this is a team effort, a family effort, and Without everybody putting their lives on hold for a period of time to make this family tradition so special, it would never happen. And I get a text from you every year saying, yo bro, did great, so proud of you. I can't believe you got through it. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a tremendous feeling. Goes to show, nothing's too tough with a little Philadelphian grit and your bro by your side. Working with my brother is a truly an honor. I, I can't even put into words what it feels like to know that regardless of opinions or disagreements or uh, different philosophies, that there is always somebody there that has your back, no matter what. I can't imagine like one person, you know, taking over a third generation business and not having a sibling to lean on or count on. I love that I get to work with my brother every day. Coming up, an old-fashioned holiday craft finding a new generation of fans on TikTok. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. from 
from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. fans ready to unlock our true crime mysteries try dateline premium on apple podcasts you'll get early access to originals plus bonus content and everything is ad free so head to apple podcast now to subscribe today is now a podcast available every morning listen wherever you get your podcasts for breaking news in our changing world download the nbc news app top story with tom yamas weeknights at seven on nbc news now you get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> Man, I gotta tell you, on TikTok, Logan's Candies, five million of you love their videos. And guess what? Probably almost as many love their candies for decades. But what they're known for this time of year? Candy canes. Let's all give a big round of applause for candy cane number one, live and in color. There it is. And by December 24th, we'll have made about 100,000 candy canes one by one, just like you're watching right now. Wow. He's TikTok's very own Willy Wonka. On an app where the only rule is to keep things short and sweet, these eye-catching videos have racked up millions of views. That's actually a pretty good video. Jerry Rowley is the candy-making star and owner of Logan's Candies. His daughter, Abby, the mastermind behind the camera. She came to me and said, Dad, there's this social media out there called TikTok. I thought we should get in, and I didn't really know what that was. We're going to start counting out our stripes. As always, we're going to begin with stripe number one. I never intended it to be this, you know, marketing thing or this, like, you know, this huge thing. I was just like, oh, I'll just post some videos and see what happens. I think it was just something that people had never really seen before. It was like, there's nothing else really like it. Now millions of folks follow Logan's to watch Jerry pull, fold, and bend all sorts of candy canes by hand. Within about 72 hours, we had over 25 million views. And it was just unbelievable. We couldn't believe it took off like that. It's just been amazing for the store. We've seen a big growth in our shipping and even just people coming in. We want to get him like a shirt or something that says like, I'm TikTok famous. Next up, the candy man himself. Eat this. <laughs> what flavor is it? Oh my gosh, I didn't know that flavor. <laughs> <laughs> well, mostly just the TikTok videos were really fun to watch. And the way that they made the candy, I thought it'd be really fun to come try like homemade like candy because I've never had that before. People definitely will recognize him. He thinks it's so funny and strange, and I do too. While the internet craze may be new, Logan's Candies has been perfecting its craft since 1933. We hand make all our candies here the old fashioned way. We have the original recipes that we've been using for 87 years. So we're just gonna begin to pull this out here a little bit. Give it a little tug, a little pull, a little stretch. We get it just the right length and thickness. We're going to give it a little twist. And right before your very eyes, we have created the candy cane. By the time we're done, we're going to fill up this entire table and we'll make about 400 candy canes this size out of the one batch. Jerry developing a sweet tooth for the business at just 12 years old when the store's original owners hired him. So I rolled candy canes that first year and bagged candy canes. And, and then the next year, I started learning to bend the candy canes. By the time he was in college, he was hooked. So when an opportunity to buy the business came along, Jerry and his then girlfriend, Susie, decided to take it on. We actually uh, started dating about uh, two weeks before I bought the store. We got married in 1985, and then we've just been running it together ever since. We were just babies running the candy store. I was still in school. I was only 16. So I would um, get out of school early and come right to work. The Logans, the family that started the business, trusted the Rowleys to carry on their sweet legacy. And the wife was still working here when Jerry took over. Then they would say, oh, we're so thankful that you guys got the candy store because you're doing it like we did. And they were just so thrilled. 40 years later, the Rowleys have preserved the store's traditions. And with their daughter, Abby, by their side, that sense of family has stayed strong as well. 
I have a lot of good memories just of being like a little kid. Kid in a candy store. I would hide under the table over there and then I'd just come out to give samples. I would like wait for my cue. Then once I started, you know, when I could see over the table, that's when I started uh, working on the table. Logan's Candies makes over 200 treats, but their candy canes remain the most popular all year long. There's St. Patty's Day. We do shamrocks for Easter or springtime. That's a little bunny head, candy cane basket. Do those for Mother's Day and Easter. Star of David's for Hanukkah. There's also one other candy cane they make that has a very special meaning. We're making the Hannah cane here, which is named after our first daughter, Hannah. After waiting nearly 10 years to have children, the Rowleys created a candy cane to celebrate the momentous occasion. The burgundy and white, they're beautiful and they're very special and we made them the year she was born, not knowing that she would only have a very short life. Oh my gosh, Hannah, she was amazing. Hannah loved the candy store. She just loved sharing the candy with everybody. But when Hannah was just three years old, she was diagnosed with leukemia. It was always amazing to me that she just had such faith. And she would tell me, Mom, if, um, if I were to die, then I don't want you to spend all your days crying. I want you to take care of Abby. I want you to laugh. She didn't want me to be devastated because she knows where she was going and she wasn't going to be in any pain anymore. So she was really amazing that way. Sadly, passing away just five years later. My heart will always be broken. I'll be missing Hannah until the day we're reunited, but I'm so thankful that we had her. The Rowley's love for Hannah is apparent everywhere you look. 26 years later, we still make the candy canes, and we still call them the Hannah canes. And their love for this time of year shines through as well. I like coming to Logan's because it makes you excited that it's Christmas time and the fresh homemade candy canes and everything. I drive in to get them every year for Christmas. My whole family loves them. We've continued to help other people have really wonderful family memories for the holidays. We realize we're part of Christmas for everybody. So many families coming in 20, 30 years in a row. They're watching the grandkids grow up, the kids grow up. It's just amazing. And they just keep coming back to make it a family tradition. Who else can say they do this? Who else can do this with their family? It's those traditions filled with love, family, and food, of course, that make the holidays all the more sweeter. And a good Thursday morning. <laughs> Check it out now. We can say the holiday season is officially underway. Oh, she looks good back there, and its arrival is coming with encouraging news when it comes to the economy. It is December 1st. This is today. Positive signs, a new move to avoid that looming rail strike in the lead up to Christmas. This morning, the action now being taken on Capitol Hill.